everybody. Hello, hello, hello. We're going to start the show. All right, everybody. This is good. Everyone here for Nate didn't even, I mean, you clapped, but you did like a silent clap, which is a weird move. So you're still talking. I know. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I interrupted that. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome. Um, this is one of those things where uh, no one's here right at this second. And then I'm going to try out jokes, and then people will fill in. And then they'll end up being a great audience that lasts for everybody else, and I will listen to the recording and look at the video and want to kill myself. But, yeah, I agree. Thank you. It's time I go. My children don't need a father. What has having a father done for anybody, really? Certainly doesn't make them funny, I'll tell you that. I have a father. Look at me. Uh, all right, before we start the show, I'm going to go over a couple rules real quick. Rule number one, this is a bathroom. Legally, you are allowed to use it. There's also a bathroom downstairs. You can use this bathroom. If you use this bathroom, you're going to have to walk right here, which is already awkward enough. Also, if I do this, I will hear you tinkle. And we will all talk about it. And believe me, there's the funniest joke you could write in the world will never be as funny as listening to a strange woman tinkle in the bathroom. So, if you don't want that to happen, use the one downstairs, because everyone will do that, and I asked them not to do it, but look, you can't ask a fish not to swim, right? It's gonna happen. So, there's that. Uh, rule number two, comedy show. So if you like something, laugh out loud. Really, just laugh. Don't smile and nod, laugh. Uh, if you don't like something, boo. I mean, feedback is really the name of the game here, guys. We like, see, perfect. You laugh when I say boo, and you do nothing when I say laugh. So it's all, this is a great sign. Uh, aside from that, uh, it is a small operation here. Bridget is on her way in. Bridget's the bartender downstairs. Normally, there's me, and then there's the kitchen staff. So if you need anything, go on downstairs, ask for it. Uh, the food will be brought up. The drink, you'll have to care of yourself. Please bring a drink down with you when you go. And if you are a comic, uh, if you see someone who's not a comic standing near the stairs, give them your seat, because they'll laugh, hopefully. Uh, and you won't, so. Good? Are we all good on the rules? Okay, I very rarely give the rules anymore because I'm getting old and cranky. Um, all right, so we'll begin. Uh, I cut my dick shaving the other night. It's funny, I was shaving my face, too. Um, no, I cut my dick shaving the other night and it really freaked me out, but I didn't make a noise. Right, and I snuck upstairs to cut my dick shaving. My wife and kids are downstairs. Thought it'd be a nice surprise for her. And then I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna bleed to death but I'm gonna do it silently. So I'll at least die with my pride, you know? I mean, my wife will come up and find me with a bloody dick, dead in a corner, slumped over in gray, but I'll have died a man who loved his children. Anyways, it stopped bleeding after about three minutes. It wasn't that big of a deal. It did hurt though. It did hurt when I cut my dick shaving. But you know what hurt even more? Putting on the aftershave. Hey. So that joke's brought to you by Aqua Velva. Aqua Velva. It's what your granddad's scrotum smelled like. Your grandma was picky. Uh, I'm doing some older stuff just for Nate tonight. Uh, Nate and I got really drunk, and I did this one to him, and then he said it was a good idea, so I did it for eight years. <clears throat> Molestation? <laughs> Call me crazy. But I'd like less molestation. Thank you very much. Uh, still great. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, if you want to yell out still great after every one of my jokes, people, that works too. Uh, hey. You, with the green glasses. You're like a fun goth librarian from a CBS crime drama. I like it. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, still great. Uh, have you ever heard of misogyny? Yeah? This is just my opinion, but I think if she weren't such a bitch, she could be a misogyny. Thank you very much. That went better than it has in years. My wife is, uh, we have two kids, and my wife's getting ready, and she wants to have another kid, which is cool because that means I get to have sex with my wife. Um, basically, she, well, she could talk me to as many kids as she wants, because that means I get to have sex. The only problem is, like, I love my wife, but when she was pregnant, especially when she got further along in her pregnancy, 
I, it was like hard to have sex with my wife, and it's not because I, I find my wife attractive. I find my wife very, I find my wife very attractive. But, like, sir, do you do you like having sex with women? Yes, I. It's pretty cool, right? It's pretty cool. But I found it like when my wife was pregnant, I found it very difficult because like, hey, let me ask you a question. Have you ever tried to have sex with a woman while actively being kicked off of her? <laughs> Well, I've already claimed I have two children. If you say yes, that is a crime, and we will prosecute. Good, good answer. Okay. People say I don't support men, but I support men. I've talked him out of a lengthy sentence. All right, I don't have too much. I, I think I'm a better parent than my wife because I have um, like more patience than my wife, I think, but it's not like an inherent value. Like My wife does a thing that all wives do when we go out with our kids, and my kids start acting up. She'll go, hey, I'm gonna count to three and then we're leaving. There's one, two, two and a half, and now we all have to leave the fucking brewery because my son won't settle down. But I have more patience because I grew up with a socket set. So my son starts freaking out, I go one, two, two and a half, two and nine sixteenths, two and one fifty seconds, two and twenty three millimeters. That's right, we're raising him bilingual. My wife's a doctor. Long pause. I don't know if Scotty shook his head at that. I agree. American children should speak American. All right. I'm trying to figure out what I want to finish with here. I, uh... Anybody with dogs? Anybody have a dog in here? Yeah. Hey, dog owners? You get a dog, right? Everyone tells you the same thing. Everyone tells you the same thing. You said, if you get a dog, you can't buy the dog, right? You gotta, you gotta adopt a dog, you gotta go rescue the dog, is what everyone tells you, correct? And they all tell you you need to go to the same spot. They say you gotta go to a no-kill shelter. You gotta rescue the dog from a no-kill shelter. <laughs> where they're giving food and water and not killed. This is my opinion, I think if you're gonna rescue a dog, maybe the yes-kill shelter is a more dire need. Also, you're not, you just say, you don't buy the dog, you go rescue the dog, you adopt the dog. Which is, which is weird, but it makes sense, because like, you go there, you go to the SPCA, you walk around, you go into little rooms, they show you all the dogs, you go in, you sit with the dog, you pet it, you test it out a little bit, and then you go up to the counter and you fill out a bunch of paperwork and you give them $250, which is the exact same way that I rescued my Toyota. <laughs> all right. Sorry if I'm hitting too close to home there. Uh, I realized I was putting on a little too much weight the other day. I went to take a shower and I took off my clothes and I looked and uh, I had, oh, I, I have a concealed hair handgun permit. I looked and I had an L-shaped bruise right here. <laughs> Which made me feel like maybe I need to stop eating so much when I'm out and about. People get weird when I say that because they, they, they're like, oh, he's got a gun on him. You know, it's very political. And it's not, I don't want to shoot anybody. And it's not because it makes me feel like a man. It's just I have OCD. And I hate to be bothered when I'm working. And if you guys ever want to be left doing alone while you're working, let's say there's a nail sticking out of a bench in the park. Take out a loaded 9mm and start using that to hammer it back in. You will clear everyone out. Real fast. Finish with this. Uh, now that I'm a father, I have, to, uh, I have to come up with the things to teach my son. You know, I gotta, you know, I gotta teach him how to be a man. I'm trying to think of something I could teach him that no one else could teach him, right? It's something that's unique to me, something from my life experience. And I think I finally figured it out. Because I was thinking about my old man, right? My old man always would give me the same advice before I left the house. He would say, Jacob, whatever you do, when you go out tonight, don't get anyone pregnant, and don't commit credit card fraud. And I never committed credit card fraud. <laughs> Even when I really needed $468, or else it was a life. <laughs> Some people get uncomfortable with that joke, but I'd like to remind everyone that I'm the father of a two-year-old, a six-month-old, and a 16-year-old ghost. <laughs> Anyways... Okay, someone voted for Trump. Well, you're not pro-choice. I get it. That's fine. I, I respect diversity. You know, I get it. I, you know, I thought as this CBS librarian with the green horn rim glasses, I thought you'd be into abortion, but you're not. That's fine. Okay. Well, we put that. We can put that on her tombstone. Uh, uh, she'll certainly stand out of Hollywood Cemetery. Uh, but I'm trying to think of what I could pass down to my own children, and I think I finally came up with it. One day I'm going to have to sit in my son's hand and say, boys, listen to me. 
Never. 69 with a woman who wears fake eyelashes. It's gonna feel like a centipede is crawling across your asshole. I thought ever since I got married, I wouldn't have to worry about that anymore, but unfortunately I married an Italian woman, so the little edges of her mustache do the same thing. All right, are you guys ready to start the show tonight? All right, we're gonna get this thing moving. We have a lot of great comedians. I was really buying time there, waiting for your first comedian to get here, but he did get here, everybody. This guy, very funny guy, and he is promising that he's not gonna shoot up any schools this semester. So put your hands together for James Copeland. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I'm, I'm out on parole. Me and uh, Dylan Roof. I don't know why I went with Dylan Roof with that one. I should have gone lighter. Okay. A lighter school. Anyway, I'm going to get into material. Um, how, how's, how are you lovely ladies doing tonight? And uh, lovely sir? Well, keep your eyes off me. I'm married. I got married last month. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at my wedding, my, my dad gave a speech. He was like, uh, James, he, uh, as a kid, he was in marching band. He uh, learned how to juggle and ride unicycle. Afterwards, I went up to him. I was like, Dad, you're making me look like a fucking nerd. I'm trying to get laid tonight. Yeah, it didn't work. I struck out, you know. It wasn't my night. Um, you know, traditionally the wedding dress is, uh, it's white, it's a symbol of purity, you know? Um, but I thought it'd be more, more accurate if my wife's wedding dress was like the color of an old treasure map, you know, with a little blood smeared on it. Because that's what color our mattress is after eight years of period fucking. Yeah. That's right. Um, before my wedding, my uh, grandmother-in-law came over to see our house, and uh, we're giving her the tour, and my wife shut our bedroom door and was like, ah, oh, it's dirty in there, you don't wanna see it. Afterwards, I, I went up to her, I was like, what are you talking about, we just cleaned. And she was like, oh, I didn't want my grandma to see that we were sleeping in the same bed. And I, I was like, we've been living together for five years. You know, does she think like we're like the parents from Leave It to Beaver? We have like two separate twin beds or something? I mean, either I'm corrupting her granddaughter or I'm gay. Either way, we're going to hell, you know? Yeah. Um, at my wedding, I, uh, I introduced uh, two good friends of mine who are black. Um, not to brag. Um... <laughs> But yeah, you know, afterwards, I, I found out like in the following weeks, they've been hanging out with each other a lot more than they've been hanging out with me. It just really sucks to know that I'm just like the, the honky hinge for them, you know? I'm just like the, the bleached bumble BFF, you know? I'm just like the uh, ivory e-harmony. You know? I'm still getting one chuckle over here, so I'm gonna do one more. I'm just like the, the gringo grinder, you know? Okay, all right, I'll stop, I'll stop while I'm ahead. Um, my wife makes a lot more money than me. Um, thank you. Yeah, some people ask me if that makes me feel emasculated, and I always say, no, of course not. The only time I feel emasculated is when she calls me Jessica while she pegs me up the ass. Yeah. Um, you guys know like when you go to a, a bank and the, the pin is chained up to the counter? So, so like no one walks away with it? I, I think we should do that with more things, you know, like, like your, your lighter or your, your phone charger. Like I would use it, I would chain down like my uh, hairline or my father's attention, you know? <laughs> just things that keep just like wandering away from, like I, I would chain down my, my wife's wandering eye, you know? <laughs> just something I can't hold on to. Um, 
Yeah, I, I was thinking about Chick-fil-A the other day. Have you guys noticed that, uh, you know, the branding is just cows doing graffiti? Just writing, like, eat more chicken. And, um... It's like, when you think about it, those cows are just protesting their own genocide. Like, I'm pretty sure they all just escaped from Cowschwitz. I mean, some of them could have come from Ducal, you know. But, like, I think they're all just protesting Adolf Chickler, you know? All right, I'm, I'm gonna write some more barnyard puns, you know? I'll, I'll come back for that. I'll, some, you know, some real E-I-E-I-O shit. Yeah, that's, that's my new thing. No more pegging jokes. Just, uh, just, uh, family-friendly genocidal cow jokes. All right, thanks, guys. I'm James. James Copeland, everybody, leaving his beer behind, just like all those people were left behind in Cowschwitz. As we all know, the gates of Cowschwitz famously said, our beat mock fry, which is the hay will set you free. Uh... That's only for people who have been to the Holocaust Museum, which was not a lot of you, or you think the Holocaust is sad for something. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not here to judge. Crossing off James Copeland. Uh, your next... I almost said character. Actually, I'm gonna stick with it. Your next character... Your next character coming to the stage was written by 15 Harvard-educated white people. Put your hands together for Scott Moore. Yeah, that's very weird. Uh, how y'all doing, people? Y'all doing all right? Yeah. I know y'all didn't come to see me, so I'm just gonna entertain you guys for like the next uh, 10 minutes. Anybody know anybody from the military? Well, okay, where? Which branch? Uh, there you go, okay, all of them in the army, okay. Okay, my mom was in the Navy. She's in the Navy. She told me she got out due to some type of honorable discharge. Now, at first I had no idea what that was. I had no idea what, I'm like, what is that? So when she first told me, I was like, ew. <laughs> I'm like, can't you take a pill for that? Like, <laughs> sounds disgusting. So show me your paperwork. She was positive for it. Um, Okay, I'm gonna take that one. I actually just got that one. Thank you guys, okay. <laughs> Anybody ever been to jail? Yeah. Of course you have, of course you have. <laughs> I actually work in a jail. When you work in a jail, you see a lot of crazy things, like how crazy people really are. I had this one guy, he was crying on my pod, and he was like, I said, what's wrong with you? He was like, I miss my wife. I said, I'm pretty sure you're gonna see her soon, right? He was like, nope, I got life. He says, I killed somebody. I said, well, damn, buddy. I said, I hate to get in your business, but uh, who did you kill? He said, my wife. <laughs> yeah, just like this summer. <laughs> <laughs> I also worked with dogs when I worked in the prison. I love dogs. But Michael Vick is my favorite football player. <laughs> Kiss my ass if you don't like him still. <laughs> no, I do like dogs, I do. Now, when I worked with the canine crew back in the prison, I don't think my sergeants liked me because they gave me a dog with no teeth. My dog was the only dog in the kennel that barked with a lisp. so annoying. My sergeant told me that we need to work on his bite work. So we tried it. He kept slipping off the sleeve. That part was supposed to be funny. It's okay. <laughs> One time we got called to a fight. It was fight on the pod. And um, I was trying to put the dog on the inmate's leg. And my dog didn't like his leg, so he went to his ear. So my dog's new name is Tyson. Oh, that must be a young crowd, okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, man. I grew up with a lot of sisters. I'm the only guy. I got three sisters. It was very traumatic. Very traumatic. Growing up, everybody was afraid. I don't know why, but everybody was afraid that I was going to like boys. 
growing up because I had all sisters. And it's not true. It's not true at all. They just taught me how to do gay stuff on accident. Now hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. <laughs> I'm not saying anything is wrong with being gay. I'm not saying anything is wrong with being My sister is gay. And when she first told me she was gay, I didn't, I didn't really know much about the lifestyle of being gay. She was like, Scotty, I'm coming out the closet. I was like, okay, cool, congratulations. I said, but do me a favor. I said, go back to the closet and take my shirt off, take my pants off, take my shoes off. She was like, I don't mean it like that. Okay. <laughs> but no, so, like I said, nothing is wrong with being gay, but who you are, it's just not who I am. You feel what I'm saying? Now, I tried to explain it, that shit to people growing up and people just got the wrong impression. You know what I'm saying? I kept giving them mixed signals. You know what I'm saying? Like, me and my dad got into an argument. And my dad was like, son, you kind of got some gay tendencies. I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, why do your hands like that? I said, I'm not doing my hands like nothing, daddy. He said, son, are you sure? I said, you know what, boy, bye. <laughs> like, <laughs> One time I went to the bathroom, and I think I wiped this a bit too hard because I had blood in the tissue. I thought I started my period. Um, okay, I'll take all that. My name is Scotty Moore. You can find me on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, all that good stuff. McFadden, hurry to get your ass up here. Y'all give it up for your host, Jacob McFadden! Get over Scott Moore, everybody! Usually I come up and say something insensitive after someone performs. <laughs> your next performer has not been here in a long time. Everybody put your hands together for James Lawson. Oh, well, got that wrong, but you know, James, I already called your name. Come do it. That's on me, man. I'm, damn, nigga. I'm a fool. <laughs> oh, what's going on, everybody? What's going on? What's going on? Ah, thank you for the one clap. I appreciate it. <laughs> Help me with these nerves, man. I, I, I hate my anxiety. I deal with crippling anxiety. Anybody else deal with anxiety? Oh, shit. Let's just, let's just breathe and fart at the same time. Get this shit out. Just, I, I, I hate it, man. I hate it. I, I've been doing comedy for 20 years. Y'all give it up for Jason. Jason for doing this show for 10 years. What, what's it, Jacob? I'm sorry, Jacob. He called me up the wrong way. I get him back. <laughs> and Jason to tell you, I've been doing this for a long time, but I still get nervous. My anxiety. I be walking back and forth, pacing the floor, and uh, blowing up the bathroom. I'm gonna apologize. That's why he said don't go in there. I, 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 I yeah, I apologize. I tried to strike a match. I don't know who came up with that dumb idea. Strike a match. It smelled like shit on fire in that bathroom. It was, I ain't lying, boy. It's, it's clean to be small, though. It's about the size of a phone booth. It's clean. It's, it is. How you doing? Okay, all right. I told you I got anxiety. Don't stare at me like that. Just, whew, no. how, you, how you doing, buddy? And on top of everything, you got me on Channel 6 News. This shit here. Gl glad you're recording. That way you can go back and edit it later on and put a laugh track in it. Won't, won't be so bad. Yeah, so what's going on, y'all? I got five minutes up here. I, what is it, five minutes? This is my job, man. Five minutes a long time at work. <laughs> I'm, especially that last five minutes. Man. That's the longest five minutes. You ever try to pass that five minutes by at work? That's the longest. You go to the bathroom, sit on the toilet, don't even pull your pants down. You just sit and, yeah, on TikTok, Instagram. Yeah. Check your emails, take a nap. Hey, wake up, you got four minutes left. Thank y'all. I like y'all, y'all laugh one table at a time. I like this shit. Man. I feel like a damn choir director. Okay, oh, thank you. Hey! <clears throat> That's all right, only three minutes and 12 seconds left, y'all. Shit, boy, shit. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have drank before I came here. I'm a little tipsy, man. I got, yeah, I, I get drunk, man. I'm trying to drive. You gotta be careful out here drinking and driving, man. And, and smoking weed, I get, I really get paranoid. My anxiety kick in when I'm smoking weed. You ever be high and driving? I hate that. 
Yeah, man. Everybody looked like the police behind you, don't they? I said, damn, when did, when did the police start driving tractor trailers? This has been a... <laughs> shit. Um, you try to put that seatbelt on, that shit keep locking up on your ass. Never. Then sometimes you be... I, one time I was so high, I just told on myself. He said, you know why I pull you over? I said, yeah, it's got the weed in the trunk, the pistol in the glove compartment. He said, no, you got a tail light out, but well, step out the car, sir, step out the car. <laughs> Shit! Whew, thank y'all. Shit, I'm serious, man. I've been here, it's been about 10 years since I've been here in this, in this dungeon. Mm, I love it, man. This is comedy boot camp. Mm, it is. Yeah, man, but I feel good, man. I, Last time I was here, I think I was like 35. I turned 48, man. I turned 48 last week. Y'all give it up, 48. Thank you, baby. They say black don't crack. They ain't seen my elbows and heels. Black dude laughed his ass off. Hey! Okay. Got some ashy elbows over there. Okay. I ain't lying. Be careful, man, uh, putting, that, putting that lotion on them heels, man. I, I, I fell down the steps last week doing that shit. Yeah, man, I did a, I had that cocoa butter Vaseline lotion, the three in one, the good, yeah, no, it was the dollar store kind. You know that dollar store lotion come out like water, don't it, y'all? Yeah, too, yeah, too much. You can't help it, the shit cheap. One squeeze, the whole bottle, okay. Whew, thank God that five minutes is over. Bad shit. Lawson, everybody, keep it going. Keep it going. All right. Uh, he's right. This is a workout room, everybody. Sometimes comedies come up to me and they go, "It's loud in here," and I tell them, "I'm sorry, I didn't get you a nice, quiet, and respectful open mic to go to." Uh, next time, I'll get everyone to pay for the open mic, so you have a really respectful room of people who don't expect a lot from you and don't mind you looking at your notes. All right. Your next comic coming to the stage, this is his first time here. I already fucked up his first time here by skipping him. Uh, put your hands together. It is a white dude. Why? Is that a problem? I, I didn't make a black guy go first. I made a white guy go first, but you didn't see him because you got here late. Not saying why, but... All right. No, it's not because he's black. It's because he has problems getting anywhere on time. Uh, your next comic, everybody. Anyways, with that intro, your next comic, everyone, put your hands together for Zach Coldor. He'll laugh. He'll laugh later. How's everyone doing tonight? Good, good. I love this time of year. I love Halloween. I uh, find it to be one of the least preachy of all the holidays, you know. It's not all about America or religion, so it's not trying to give me a history lesson or tell me I'm living my life wrong, you know? Which I appreciate, because I think it's my main motivation in life is uh, not being told I'm doing things incorrectly. You know, I'm avoiding the uncomfortable situation. Like, I don't really like having long hair. I just hate the awkward conversation with the barber more, you know? Yeah, I don't know, it was easy. I had the same barber for like 20 plus years. Uh, it was a good relationship, pretty low maintenance. Um, then one day, he up and died on me. Now I'm looking for someone else who knows how to cut the usual, you know? But it was a good relationship, low maintenance. Um, he reminded me a lot of my dad, actually. I had a good childhood. Um, I remember one uh, Christmas, my dad bought me a Nintendo video game console. Came with the uh, Mario Brothers video game. And as an Italian-American, he was like legitimately offended by the game, you know? <laughs> like he ran into my room and he was like, what do you think we do all day? Break up the bricks? Eat up the mushrooms? <laughs> And then he ran out of the room, boing, 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 boing. <laughs> no, I do like uh, playing video games, like a game called SimCity. I don't know if you guys have played this game, but uh, it's where you get to live out your dream of being a city planner, you know? I like uh, recreating Richmond as much as possible. It's just uh, difficult because they put limit on the amount of vape shops I can open, so it's kind of tough. No, I like Richmond though. I've uh, lived here for a while. Recently I got a full-time job, a job I could say is a career, so I went to someone I look up to, someone who's had continuous employment for like over six months, and I said, like, what are some things I can do to endear myself to my boss? He said, Zach, I got a great technique, it's called mirroring. 
who want to say the last few words of every sentence they say back the way they say it. So they're like, hey, how are you? You're like, hey, how are you? And I gotta tell you, it's working. I met this guy first day. He's like, hey, I'm Chris. I own the company. I said, hey, I'm Zach. I own the company. He looked very confused, so I think I might have to let him go, but I might have got a promotion. I don't know. No, I do like having a job, though. I uh, like the benefits. I like having health insurance. It really helps. Recently, I got a primary care physician, which I hadn't had for a long time, and I was underprepared for like the first uh, visit, you know? I didn't realize he was going to ask me questions about my health, which is dumb. Obviously, he's going to. But I figured he was the expert, so he would know more than I did. But uh, he was like, uh, what are some problems? What are some things, concerns? And I didn't really know what to say, but I wanted to be honest. So I told him, I have an unusually high butt crack. It can be very embarrassing. He looks confused, but he uh, told me to keep an eye on it, and I, I don't think it's going to get any worse, hopefully. So. No, I, I do love uh, the benefits of work, like a PTO, like, I, like uh, going on vacation. I just feel like sometimes, even though it can be stress-free with PTO, it can be stressful when you're trying to rent a car. Like they try to hide all the buttons I'm very familiar with, like the gas can release. Last time I was at the gas station, I couldn't find it. I gave up, had to get the golden glove box, get the manual out. People were staring at me, waiting for the spot, like I'm just reading about my car. I don't know. But um, no, I don't go on many vacations. Uh, I find myself at home most of the time, watching TV. Uh, recently I started watching this show called The Penguin. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's like a gritty raw take on a classic comic book strip, uh, The Batman. But I feel like The Batman's been done, you know? I feel like other comics uh, deserve their chance for like adult themes. So I got a good example of one. From the mind of Charles Schultz comes one man to take back the streets. He is, hey, I'm Charlie Browns. I don't know if you heard, but I don't work for peanuts no more. Big pin, you piece of shit. Big pin, you piece of human garbage. You think I wouldn't see that cloud of dust following you around, you piece of shit? Linus, Lucy, grab him. Patty, show him why we call you the peppermint. Yeah. So um, I thought that would be more closer to five minutes, but it wasn't. So I'll do it some other newer material. I um, thinking about the future uh, when it's like our robots against their robots and future wars. I think we're gonna still have to thank them for their service. You know, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, so yeah, I um, been uh, thinking about having uh, children recently. You know, I. Um, Stop wearing condoms to see if we can have kids, but uh, that was 10 years ago, so now I'm thinking there might be a problem. But um, no, I went to a fertility clinic. Um, instead of have low motility, which means the sperm don't move around very well, but uh, he kind of chuckled when he said it, which kind of offended me, you know. And he was like, "Oh no, no, it's like uh, like the Three Stooges moving around," which offended me, you know. It's like I'm old enough to know the reference of the Three Stooges. It's kind of offensive to me, but um, thanks, guys. That's my time. I'm Zach. Zach Gordon, everybody. It is true. His sperm are just like the Three Stooges. Every time they go looking for the egg, they start poking each other in the eyes and they get lost. It's crazy. And then they start doing a fake fireman routine and jumping out of the vagina onto a fake trampoline. It's crazy the way his sperm is just like the Three Stooges. All right. Anyways, hey, we have a surprise jump in for your next comic. Your next comic, this is a little known fact. Your next comic is actually Nate Izquierdo's former fiance. Uh, this is true. Uh, for those who have known Nate for a while, Nate's our guest of honor tonight. Uh, these two used to date and they almost got married. Uh, unfortunately, um, she decided uh, to marry uh, an American citizen instead. Uh, everybody, put your hands together for the one and only Kate Carroll. Yes, yes, we were engaged to be wed, um, but I, I decided I wasn't gonna put him through this. Um, <laughs> instead, I married Anthony Thompson. Um, <laughs> that's a joke for only people who understand. <laughs> no, I, uh, it is, it's spooky season. Yay, spooky season. Yeah, we all love spooky season. Um, I love spooky season because I have yet to find something that terrifies me. Um, <laughs> I want so badly to see a horror film that actually makes me contemplate my existence on this planet. The closest I ever got was hereditary. Um, <laughs> but 
in hindsight, I was thinking about it and I was like, wait, actually, no, there is one thing in particular that does genuinely terrify me. I think a lot of you guys can relate to that. And um, it's vulnerability. <laughs> Being vulnerable terrifies the fuck out of me. I cannot overstate how scary it is for me. Like, you know, I, I think a lot of people here, like, raise your hand if it's hard for you to be vulnerable with a partner. Like, I, I, there should be a lot more people raising their fucking hands right now. I do not believe you. <laughs> this should... <laughs> I love that. You know what? You know, if, if you guys want to talk later, we can. Work. I, I have a degree in psychology, um, <laughs> but yeah, no. Like one of, one of my big things is like it's so scary for me. It's it, it like I, I understand it's hard for other people. It's pathological for me. <laughs> it's so bad, um, and I do have an example for you. So, um, for for example, um, I was actually I was out at a restaurant with some friends, old friends, people I've known for pretty much my entire life, people that I love very dearly and I know that they love me. And while we were there in the middle of eating, I realized that I was choking. Now, my dear right here, Flo, if you were choking right now, what would you do? Um, I'd probably start Oh, you know what? That's actually that's a very good. That's a good one. Uh, what if you didn't hear Flo said that they would start slapping the person next to them? That's actually a good idea. You know, get someone to pay attention. Uh, actually, what you're supposed to do, and and if you went to public school, you probably learned this, or maybe not. I don't know. I don't know what kind of public school you went to. Um, but it's the uh, international signal for I'm a fucking idiot who doesn't know how to breathe when I eat. Um, <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do, do so that people know to intervene and give you the Heimlich. Y'all want to know what I did? I stood up and I walked out of the restaurant <laughs> like an old dog going into the woods to die alone. Do you understand how bad that is? Like, I would rather choke to death on a convenience store chicken tender. It was a convenience store, it wasn't a restaurant. In the middle, in the middle of a dirty Richmond alleyway <laughs> than ever let anyone I care about see fear in my eyes. No, I, uh, I actually, uh, I've since, I've, I've, I've gotten that fixed. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that means. Um, I got married. I got married. And, um, yes, yeah, no, uh, it's, it's, it's been great. My husband's absolutely wonderful. I love the hell out of that motherfucker. Um, but one of the things I will say is that uh, he is one of the most incredible, just supportive partners. He also, like a lot of people's in-laws has, like a lot of people who have in-laws has terrible parents. Um, <laughs> not so much his mom. His mom is lovely. His father, on the other hand, um... Just as a bit of perspective, he is a, a, a hardcore MAGA left, like, not left, but, oh wow, oh my god, that'd be so crazy. Um, no, far right, alt right Twitter personality. And it's so bad that he, like, literally, the first time I ever met this man, uh, it was there, we were there for his birthday, and Tyler had gotten him a, a book on the history of Appalachia. They're from Appalachia, they're very proud Appalachians. And his father, who considers himself the most intelligent person on the face of the planet, takes one look at this book, says, I don't read, and throws it on the ground. Which, I know that's not true. So later I was like, what the hell was that about? What the hell is that about? Like, what's going on? He's like, well, I, he doesn't want to actually deal with any of the shit that comes along with acknowledging, like, black people in Appalachia. Which is so fucked up. And I was like, well, what's, like, why is he so bent up about that? He's like, well, he's, he thinks that there's too much representation of black people in the media. <laughs> and and, I'll, and I'll, I'll finish it off by saying this. I, I, I asked him, like, what the deal was, and he was like, oh, well, uh, I think he's mad that the Little Mermaid's black. And uh, so I guess my first question is, how do you make the Little Mermaid Appalachian? <laughs> like, do you show her, like, running moonshine and stealing copper out of her neighbor's fucking walls? <laughs> Do you make fucking Ursula the Mothman? I don't know. All right, guys, I'm Kate. Thank you so much. Please give it up for your host, uh, Jacob McFadden. You guys are wonderful. Thank you. The form.
former Mrs. Izquierdo, everybody. All right, that's Kate Carroll. And uh, just to remind everybody, her father is racist. I was half listening. Her father is racist. And I will tell you this, uh, I also have a problem with the new Little Mermaid because they have male mermaids. Regular mermaids have tits. If you're a male mermaid, you're just a fish. <laughs> if you lose the bottom, yeah, there's literally nothing distinguishing you. And if you think this is a weird observation, I have a two-year-old and it just comes on after Bluey and you have to see it. All right, let's keep this thing moving along. Your next comic's not here, so let's skip to another comic who is here. Your next comic is the manager at Strange Ways Brewing Company. Yeah. And he says that if you applaud for him, that he'll give you free drinks for life. Yeah. As long as you remember his name, which is Daniel McCabe. Yeah. That's my right there. That's a guarantee. It's on tape. Look at my N-word. It's on tape. There is libel. There's a name I can't say. <laughs> we are off to an amazing start here. Wow. Home sweet home, how are we doing tonight? I love to hear it. I love to hear it. Yeah, there's a lot of rumors about me out there. Uh, you hear a lot of shit about yourself, right? Uh, anyone got any crazy rumors that they've heard about themselves? Jacob. Yeah, that's... Gigantic, like, almost intimidating to buildings. Yes. Yeah, don't patronize me. That's just not true. Has to use a car wash. We can tell by the tone of your voice that it's like, beep, beep. Has to use a car wash on his dick. Yeah. Yeah. Beep, beep. Anyway, I, uh, there's, a, there's a crazy rumor about me out there. It's, uh, you know, you guys going to believe this? They say that I'm the guy who stole Woody in Toy Story. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> that was my dad, that wasn't me. <laughs> uh, but I have, I have gotten, like, especially since I've gotten into comedy, uh, there is this new like, thing that people like to say. They're like, you know, you look Jewish, Danny. What? <laughs> exactly, what? What does that mean? Well, someone said, so I was talking about with a coworker. I was talking about with a coworker, and he said, well, I thought you were Jewish. He goes, you know, you kind of look Jewish. And I go, I don't know what that means. He goes, well, you know, you also have a lot of opinions on things. <laughs> Did I just unlock a new level of racism? Like, I got the Xbox achievement right under that conversation. 20 Gs, you just unlocked a new stereotype. 20% of gamers have only unlocked this. You mean to tell me that 20% of gamers have unlocked a stereotype that they have in their heads? I don't believe that, that's gotta be much higher. Uh, all right, well, if you don't like that one, I got a softer one for you, um, and it's not Jacob's dick. Um, hey -o. Uh, <laughs> what do you call a snake that can't slither? What? A reptile dysfunction. Oh. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Am I right? Am I right? You know, you know, we all slither, we all wiggle, we get loose, right? You know, you know, uh, we got any couples up here? Yeah. <laughs> I love that laugh. <laughs> yeah, well, if you have a partner, if you got a situation ship, if you have a boot thing, would you still love them if they were a worm? Hell no. Hell no. Boo. Okay. All right. Roz? I've loved every worm I've ever been. You know what that is? You know what that is, Roz? That's heartwarming. Oh, I know, I know, I know. It's already going downhill since the snake joke. But uh, <laughs> I will say this, you know, uh, I, I would still love my partner if she was a worm. I, uh, I think there's a lot of different ways that can go, you know. I like, I like all types of women. I like to think to myself, you know, yeah, I mean, like, 
You know, I mean, what if she's what if she's real sweet? You know, what if she's real sweet. She's like candy. She's like a gummy worm. You know, I mean, a gummy worm. Yeah. What if she's taller than me? I got no problem with that. You know, I uh, I'd worship her. You know, you know what you call that? You call that a dune worm. You know why? Because you got to do it all for the spice. You know, I'm gonna be kneeling down to her. You're gonna hear the music. Ah! Something like that. And, uh, you know, I mean, what if she wants to try new things? Things that I haven't tried before, you know? What if, what if she wants me to experiment a little bit? What if she wants to try pegging with me? You know, she wants to get up all inside me. You know what you call that? A tapeworm. <laughs> gotta love that, gotta love that. Oh, man. Well, hey, I'll leave you guys on one last one here. I'll leave you all on one last one here. So, uh, I was talking to someone downstairs, you know, we are talking about thrift shops. You know, if uh, finding new ways that people can be racist or having worms isn't bad enough for you. Um, I found a pretty bad feeling. Have you guys uh, donated clothes to a thrift store before? Yeah. 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 Have you ever gone back to that thrift store and your clothes are still there? You know how that feels? You're just scamming through the aisles. You're like, oh, that looks good. I had that. You know, they come up behind you and they're just like, are you finding everything you're okay? And you're like, I'm not. I'm not. Anyway, let's end that on a strong note. Let's bring Jacob back up here. I'm Danny McCabe. Drinks are on me. Daniel McCabe, manager at Dabney Road. Go get your crowlers for free, everybody. And that's a promise. Yay. Silver, delete that. Um, all right, we're going to keep this thing moving. Uh, by the way, uh, just to one-up Danny, I went to Plato's Closet once with an ex-girlfriend of mine, and they took all of her clothes and handed all of mine back so we're not buying these, which is a way worse feeling. At least they took your clothes. All right, we're going to keep this thing moving. Uh, I just want to say, by the way, for everyone out there in the audience, when people hit you with a premise, right? Remember James Copeland earlier was like, you guys ever go to a bank, you know, they have the pen chained up? It's a lot more fun if instead of going nodding, you guys go, fuck yeah! I know exactly about that pen! Like, give it too much energy. It'll really make that joke go to a new level. So let's try it. Uh, hey, you guys ever breathe air? Yeah! Fuck yeah! I mean, if I had something ready for that, it would have killed at that moment. I really should have picked something I knew about. But I don't breathe air. I'm better than you. Your next comment coming to the stage is not better than you. In fact, he's exactly on your level. In fact, he's below that level because he's from Hopewell. Everybody, put your hands together for a man from the Section 8 of Richmond. It's Patrick Logan. Hello, everyone. Yes, I do live in Hopewell, so I do not breathe air. I do not. Uh, breathe nitrogen oxide. Uh, uh, visited my parents uh, for the first time as an adult recently. You ever do that? Stay the night with your parents as an as an adult? Yeah, I did that. I did that. Uh, not at my parents' house, dude. No, you don't, man. All right, that was bad. He's like, fuck yeah, I stayed at your mom's house. Uh, yeah, I stayed the night with my parents, and it brought back a lot of memories. Um, as a 34-year-old man, I must say, it was really nice feeling like I was 31 again. Uh, uh, um, yeah, I finally did move out into an apartment. Uh, living in an apartment with really thin walls, and I was playing some loud music, and uh, my neighbor's girlfriend comes over and knocks on the door. She's like, hey, you mind turning that music down a little bit? And I did. Um, but five minutes later, I heard them arguing screaming, yelling, throwing things. So I go over there, I'm like, hey, you mind turning that domestic violence down a little bit? Uh, sure would appreciate it. Uh, they stopped, they actually did stop fighting each other and both beat the shit out of me. Uh, I saved their relationship. Uh, I know I did because a few days later I heard them having sex and she was loving it. She was moaning so loud. I wasn't even mad. Now I know what my neighbors would hear if I had a big dick. You know, uh, she doesn't sound like that when I fuck her. Uh, 
Uh, in my dreams, in my dreams. Uh, I believe in chivalry. Any, do, do women still like chivalrous men? Hell yeah. Cool. I like, I like to be a protector. You know, I like to open doors. That's not really protective, but I like to uh, <laughs> open. I mean, if the door's open, it's not closed, you can get out. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> so you're safe, you know, uh, open doors, pull chairs out. And then if you do this, if you're in the city with your woman, guys, you should stand, when you're walking down the sidewalk, you should stand closer to the road. I don't know if y'all know that because you have to protect women from other women drivers. I mean, it is dangerous <laughs> out here. Chivalry's not dead. Uh, somebody asked me, they're like, they're like, what are you gonna do if a car comes? It's like, I'm still gonna run, but you get a head start, you know? <laughs> Um, I uh, met somebody here a few weeks ago, uh, a nice girl, and she comes up and uh, volunteers this information, and uh, she's like, yeah, I just had my 12th friend die from a fentanyl overdose. Yeah. And like, the first thing I thought of was like, you should hang out with other people. Uh, actually, now you have to hang out with other people. Uh, uh, but a little bit of car safety, though. Um, safety, car safety. Everybody should have one of these in their car. A window breaker. Um, and if you, what that is, yeah, in your car, window breaker. To get out, because if you drive over a bridge and submerge underwater, there's this thing that you can uh, break the window open with and escape. And there's one on Facebook now with the money back guarantee. Um, <laughs> for what? Who's gonna give you a refund, God? I mean, that's, that's like selling a parachute with a money back guarantee. That's like selling fentanyl in general. I mean, it's just bad marketing. A um, uh, little bit of more sad news. My friend texted me recently, told me that she's real sad that she's gotta put her dog down. Yeah, it was real sad. She, she's like, Patrick, I'm, I'm really sad. I've got to send Roscoe across the Rainbow Bridge. And I just thought that was devastating. That her dog's got to go to gay heaven. I mean, that's just... Rainbow Bridge, hope he's got a window breaker. Uh, but, you know, since y'all like that fucked up shit, uh, I got one more I just thought of. Uh, I don't really get into politics and war and stuff, and to me, it does not matter where you stand on Israel and Gaza, as long as you're not standing in Gaza, you'll be all right. It's spooky season, everybody loves spooky season. We love that, the best time of the year. Uh, I love it. It's spooky, yes, Israel is spooky, all right? It's a good segue, it's a great segue. War is fucking... No, I love this time of year. It's, uh, I usually start raw dogging this time of the year because I love a good scare, you know? It's, uh, and if it doesn't work out, I have $500 to make a ghost. Uh, all right, guys, my name's been Tucker Carlson. Uh, Y'all have a good night, thank you. He said that's for Carl Carlton's a, he's an old man comic who needs to hold on to something while he's performing. Sometimes the jokes are just so exciting coming out of his mouth. He's like, oh, help me. But we're not going to go to him next. We're going to go to some other people with uh, youth and vitality. Uh, your next comic coming to the stage, everybody, is a human rights lawyer, which is a fucked up way to introduce someone. Because legally, if that's true, she has a professional obligation to correct the record. And if it's not true and she doesn't mention it, it seems like she's committing an ethical violation. Anyways, put your hands together for George Clooney's wife, Arena Manellis, everybody. Yeah, ethical violation, yeah. Breaking the law. I love the UN. Yeah. Shit, that's the best introduction I've ever had. <laughs> Thank you, Jacob. I love that I'm gonna get a bar complaint at a stand-up hole outside of a bar. This is exactly where I'm hoping my professional career is going. <laughs> so, I'm here, actually, I'm Irina. I'm here to get away from my kids tonight. Thank you, thank you. 
Um, I try to be a good mom. My son invited me to his third grade picnic. And when I got there, he started acting super distant. And I was like, buddy, you don't have to be embarrassed by me in front of your friends. Life goes by so quickly. And before you even know it, you'll realize they think I'm kind of a MILF. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is the most validating thing I've ever done. Forget therapy, I'm just coming here. <laughs> so, listen, I know that's not true. Like, growing up, I used to hear confidence is sexy, and I was like, yes, but what about a crippling need for approval? Yeah. <laughs> well, yes. The reality is, on a good day, if I'm anything, I'm like a mole. Um, a mildly attractive lover of falafel. <laughs> and by falafel, I mean Semitic. And by Semitic, I mean I have a lot of opinions on things. <laughs> you guys are about to hear. <laughs> so, you know, it's been like a weird time uh, to be a Jew for many reasons. And it's always been a little hard because my family was devastated by the Holocaust. And I know we're all here to have a good time, so I want to make sure to talk about the Holocaust. <laughs> and so telling my kids about this without scaring them is tricky. So I was like, guys, um, a long time ago, sadly, people didn't like the Jews, but everyone loves us now. <laughs> Even the FBI reading the latest stats is like, oh shit, people hate you. <laughs> We're only like 2% of the US population, but we get a whopping 68% of religious hate crimes. So in your face, we're number one. <laughs> that is the swagger I bring as a human rights attorney. <laughs> but uh, you know, I have had a hard time with it, but I was like, you know what? I don't want to be scared. So everywhere I go now, I wear my Star of David, my other Judaica, and my face. Uh, and they, yeah, the other, I, I am going there. So the other day I was getting, <laughs> I was getting coffee and this barista kept staring at my Star of David and I could tell he wanted to say something, but instead he just kept looking and I was like, buddy, eyes up here or here, but this whole situation is making me really nervous. <laughs> and the other thing that's been making me nervous is like, for the past year, the hatred's been skyrocketing and now there is intense police presence just so I can go pray, so my kids can go to Sunday school, so we can gather in community. For me to take my kids to a movie because it's with a Jewish kids club. Um, and I'm like, I don't wanna get down about it. I wanna look for the good like my tradition teaches. So I guess now that I'm dripping Judaica, my kids have bodyguards and many, 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 many men wish me death upon me. Um, <laughs> I guess being a Jewish lawyer is no longer the most hip hop thing about me. <laughs> so that's nice. And, you know, I feel like it's hard to talk about because when the S hit the fan, a lot of organizations that had come out on every single other human rights issue suddenly adopted the MC Hammer doctrine. Look at my eyes, man, you can't touch this. <laughs> I guess I have to do the TED Talk on anti-Semitism, so who's ready to learn about Jew hatred? <laughs> yes, thank you, that guy was born ready, I love it. So one of the things that makes it kind of unique is a heavy reliance on conspiracy theories. So for example, like Marjorie Taylor Greene tweeted recently, yes, they can control the weather. I don't know who they is, I'd like to think she's respecting the pronouns of one non-binary person from the Marvel Universe. Um, but recently she had also said that California wildfires were caused by Jewish space lasers. Um, and I wrote that joke, and it's true. But then a couple of weeks ago, that's right, um, a couple of weeks ago, Iranian regime launched like the greatest barrage of drones at Israeli civilians in history, which thankfully were largely intercepted by Jewish space lasers, so I stand corrected. And you know, then you've got like Candace Owens and like Tucker and others on the alt-right kind of recycling the Jews killed Jesus, Jesus trope, because I guess why let a classic go to waste? Uh, but you know my fave these days, are like the woke, like super white, super rich college students 
whose parents pay mortgage-sized tuition so they can like scream at Jews go back to Poland. Their vibe is like um like wasps for ISIS. <laughs> and they, they're like, yeah, I stand with Hezbollah and Hamas. I'm Ryan. <laughs> I brought my balaclava from Aspen. <laughs> you can't cross this squad. This is a Zionist and gluten-free zone. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. And look, I don't want to pretend like I speak for all Jews. Um, funny story, a couple of years ago, Hamas was being sued in the US, and the dude who represented them, fact, was named Stanley Cohen. Um, so I tell you this for the moral that even Hamas wants a Jewish lawyer. <laughs> Thank you, The voice of all Jews, Arena Manelis, everybody. All right. That is, uh, I, look, Arena, I don't care who killed Jesus. And I don't, I don't understand why people do. Because frankly, honestly, if Jesus hadn't died, I'd be in a way worse position. What if Jesus just got to be 93 and no one killed them? And it's like, well, I guess we're all damned for all time. Thank God the Jews killed Jesus. That allowed him to fight the devil or whatever he did and save my soul. So, hey, Arena, thank you for iron doming, my lord. All right, let's keep this moving along. Now for the Palestinian perspective. Uh, <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Will's not till later in the show. Uh, your next comedian, boy, he has nothing to say about the West Bank, but when it comes to Kashmir, he's got a lot on his mind. Put your hands together for Prashant Adele. Prashant! Yeah! Oh, Vito, what the fuck is up, baby? Keep it going for yourself. Let's go. That's right, yo, good things are happening in my life, y'all. Good things oh, yeah. are happening in my life. I'm auditioning for Top Gun 3, baby. That's right, I'm auditioning for Top Gun 3 as one of the fighter pilots. Call name Isis. Let's bring it, that's right, that's right. Ah. Uh, any month there is significance attached to it, I really like to learn about that month. You know, during February, I think about black people. What's up, brothers? Oh. What's up, y'all? During December, I'm a Christian. I think about Jesus Christ. Give it up for Jesus, you know? In October, I think about titties. Yeah. Breast Cancer Awareness Month. By far my favorite. Just saying, by far my favorite. Yeah. Oh, I have a question, I have a question. Oh, actually, for August, for August, I was trying to have anal sex. <laughs> if you all don't know, August is known for anal. That's why it's called anal August. This is something my roommate and I have come up with. He's gay, so he won. I'm sore. I lost that month. I lost twice. I went to a barber, and I was like, hey dude, uh, uh, make me look fuckable. Make me look fuckable. So he gave me this haircut and fucked me. Twice. Twice that month. That's crazy. That's right. The other day I was listening to the news, and this journalist was asking Kamala Harris, is like, hey Kamala, what temperature do you cook your turkey? She said 300 degrees for four hours. <laughs> Listen, y'all, I know she's a female presidential candidate, but that's fucked up. Why are you asking cooking questions to her? That's fucked up. I want to know about policy. Israel and Gaza are going crazy. The fuck you gonna do about it? Israel is going crazy on Gaza. The fuck you gonna do about it? She'll probably say 400 degrees for three hours. It's a slow roast, y'all. It's a slow roast. The other day, uh, I got to experience the American healthcare system, y'all. That's right. I got to experience the American healthcare system. Uh, I got COVID a few months back, so I did the online medic thing. I have insurance through my work, so I said I have COVID. 
few minutes later, the doctor popped up online. He was like, hey, what's up? I said, I have COVID. He was like, all right, take this prescription, pick it up from the pharmacy, and he fucked off. Five minutes, I paid $150. See, when I went to a strip club and I paid 150 for a lap dance, at least she made me feel something. <laughs> and that was 15 minutes of a lot of feeling. Thank you. The healthcare system should learn something from our friendly neighborhood strippers. Please. That's right. Ah, cigarettes are so good. <laughs> cigarettes are so good. Why the fuck are they so good? Like anything happens over here, you step outside, close the door, light that thing up. <sighs> So fucking good. But also, you die. You get cancer and you die. Ain't that a bitch? I have a solution, y'all. I have a solution. I'm telling you one thing. I'm telling you one thing. Listen up. It's pretty out there. It's pretty out there, but it's a good one. See, instead of, see, instead of aborting a baby, let's harvest them. You know, instead of, like, you save the baby once. Few months later, you got to your, you got to know your grandma has been smoking like a motherfucker and now needs a lung. Transplant that bitch. You saved two lives. There's a special place in heaven for you. Now it's your choice. Are you pro-life, pro-choice, or pro-harvest? Think about it, y'all. That's my time. My name is Prashant Patel. Give it up for your host, Jacob, and give it up for yourselves. Let's keep this bitch going. The agrarian comedian, everybody, Prashantha Dell. Keep it going for Prashant. <laughs> or don't, you racist. What the fuck? <laughs> All right. Your next comedian, I'm so glad to bring him to the stage because finally the old white men are being represented in comedy. Your next comic is our diverse... Silver, don't say anything. Your next comic <laughs> is our diversity inclusion, everybody. Here to represent... The malign voices and voting for Trump in 2024. It's my friend. Was that good? I read it just like you wrote it. Carlton K. Hey. White to Trump. White to Trump. <laughs> Fuck you. That is going to make the end of my set seem so much weirder. All right. Um, shout out Sandman. Sh fuck Sandman. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that, though. Um, I don't know if anybody knows it. I haven't been out in a while. I'm moving a lot slower these days. Uh, James said earlier he was 48, and I was like, fuck, thank God somebody's older than me. Uh, <laughs> I turned 47 this week. I'm not excited about it. Uh, yay! yay. It's not fun. I wake up in the morning and everything's stiff, except for the one thing that's helpful. Uh, it's green. Yeah. No, that's, that's stuck at all times, Jacob. Thank you. Um, nothing brings me joy anymore, I'm finding out. I mean, look, I'll still laugh if a kid falls down the stairs or something, but tripping him just doesn't bring me the joy that it used to. Uh, I stick the foot out and there's just no smile on my face. I just, all right. It was, I found out that uh, at this age too, club music, dance music has its place, okay? Why'd you look at, because you're, well, first of all, you're spread eagle and you're facing me, so I don't know whether I'm supposed to talk into this mic or that one, but. Um, <laughs> No, club music has its place. I've learned it's not in the men's room. Uh, I was <laughs> Now, if you're at a club and you're experiencing it, that's one thing, but if you go into like a fucking Barnes and Noble and they're just bumping a banger in the men's room, it, <sighs> subconscious takes over, okay? I was in there just handling my business and when it told me to jump, I jumped. When it said to put my hands up, I did and they stayed there and the guy next to me was really confused. <laughs> And wet. Um, no? All right, fuck that then. Uh, <laughs> no, I learned another thing too. I, I hate it when, and I don't know if other guys experience this too, but I hate it when guys try to talk to you in the men's room. Yeah, it's it, just go in there and handle your business and get the fuck out. I don't need a conversation. Um, so to break that, I've decided to start doing a new thing where uh, I talk to my dick while I'm at the urinal and I say disturbing things to it just to make them not start a conversation. 
Uh, my favorite ones now are, please don't bleed this time. That's a good one. And uh, if you really want to fuck with them, just don't get hard, don't get hard, don't get hard. That's a good one as well. I, uh, I'm, I'm no longer allowed at that Chuck E. Cheese, but that's fine. I'm, uh, <laughs> I just put that on there for no reason whatsoever. Um, let's see, I was at a stoplight today and there was a obvious Trumper in the car next to me. Um, you know what I'm talking about. You know what they look like. Um, <laughs> but he had a, I, I feel like he got it at the wrong store. He didn't realize what it was. He had an uh, air freshener hanging from his rear view that said, my penis, my rules. Exactly. Uh, I don't know if he understood the irony of that with the whole making rules for women when you don't have a vagina thing, but it was also really weird that the whole car smelled like dick and balls. I don't know why, why you would want an air freshener that smelled like that, but that's what his thing was. Um, here's, how's this for a segue? Speaking of far right dicks, no? All right. Uh, I told you that your Trump intro was going to make everything weird now. Um, have you, has anybody heard about uh, the far right trying to cancel yoga? Has anybody heard about that? Yeah. They, they're saying that it's like satanic or not Christian. It's all this other shit. Look it up. It's crazy. Uh, but like you're not allowed to say namaste. You're not allowed to, like they, they, they think it's because it's not Christian, they shouldn't be doing it. Um, so they've actually started changing the names of things to make it more Christian or something. I don't understand. So like if you're familiar with yoga, you might know these poses. Happy baby is now a pro-life position. Um, corpse pose is the perfect Democrat, I think is what they're calling it. It's weird. Um, and downward facing dog is now submissive wife. I don't know why they're doing it, but it's, they make, it makes them feel better, I guess. Um, they did say, and the women that are, that are backing this are even worse, because they're like, you know, I'm not really getting more flexible, I'm just bending to the Lord's will. It's fucking weird. It's very bizarre and I don't understand it. All right. Uh, let's see. All right, I'll finish with this one because this is my, one of my favorites. And it's been working pretty well, even though it's not Trump related. Um, I have learned recently that if I drink a Monster Energy drink in the morning to wash down my Adderall, that I can see sounds and taste time. It's fantastic. And if I pop a Blue Chew on top of that, I can fuck ghosts. Uh, I enjoy it, but the Confederate soldier that died in my house, not a fan. Uh, guys, I'm Carlton K. Thank you so much. Let's get Jacob back up here. That is an interesting, like, philosophical point he ended on. Because he did admit to raping a ghost. But it's a racist ghost. And so, like, we're all okay with, like, bad people getting punished in prison. But this guy's being punished for eternity. It's confusing. I mean, it would certainly keep you up in your dorm room until 2 a.m. Sorry, that's something they used to do when weed was illegal when he was in college. I'm kidding. Carlton didn't go to college. He went to trade school. All right. Your next comedian... That's, and that's a respectable thing, by the way. Your next comedian... Sorry, I was fucking a ghost. Your next comedian, your next comedian has never fucked a ghost. In fact, she's never fucked anybody. Your next comedian is the holy virgin mother of the Richmond comedy scene. Put your hands together for the chaste Savette. Guys, oh my God, I'm gonna blush being so chaste. I've been obsessed with sex since I was like a kid. Yeah. My mom, I asked her what it was when I was six, and she told me I was in the bathtub. Um, you know, runs, runs in the family, uh, sexual enthusiasm. I'm wearing a hose. Um, I'm not going to waste time talking about it, but hose in this house, you know. Uh, let's see. Okay, so speaking of sex, which like I'm always speaking of sex, there's like nothing else to really speak about. Um... I squirted a couple months ago. Whoa! Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. But I've like, I've been thinking about it because I didn't orgasm when I squirted and I was doing sex with a sex nerd 
you know, which is like a polyamorous person who has like calendars and stuff, you know? <laughs> has anyone else here squirted before? Yes! yes. Oh my God, all these people, okay? Well, I was, a, you know, a, a, a mount this sex nerd. And like, of course, like I'm kind of like a sex nerd too, but like I'm not a sex nerd in terms of calendars. I'm more of a sex nerd like, instead of masturbating to porn, I masturbate to like, movie kissing scenes. Like, like Jim and Pam kissing in the office. That first kiss has made me come more than probably anything else I've ever watched. Um, or been on top of. Um, or below, you know, or side, or... There are lots of different ways to do it. We can talk after this if you need any demos. Um, I have offered that before. Have you ever, like, offered your friend to be like, guys, I'm so good at fucking that you should let me fuck you so I can show you how to fuck better? That's, like, the kind of strange confidence I have, but maybe it is also, like, social unawareness, you know? Yes. Yeah, they're, like, super red face. Anyway, okay, I should get back to... I'm just remembering this time that I offered that to the student. He said no, which was weird, I thought, but whatever. Um, uh, I guess people probably don't like to be told like you're probably bad at this so you know let me help you maybe that's like not sexy um, I was just trying to be so kind okay let's get let's get back to it um, what I say made sense let's get let's get back to it uh, I was talking about that squirting right okay so someone describe what squirting felt like for you P okay anybody else what did it feel like when it was happening did, okay, I didn't come, okay? So this is, this is what I was thinking while driving the car, because everyone has their best thoughts while driving the car. I think he fucking squirted me himself. I think that he probably, as a sex nerd, had some sort of device to make me think I squirted, because I squirted. And then I hopped off his dick, started running around the room being like, I squirted, I'm so awesome, I'm so awesome. First, first, this is what happened. I thought the condom broke, because I felt like water sort of get play, and I was like, what is that? What is that? I was like, did the condom break? And he was like, no, you squirted. He told me I did. I was like, I did? He was like, yes, you did. I was like, yay! I was like, I'm amazing. Started running around the room. And I was like, okay, let's, you know, once I was done celebrating, I was like, let's get back to it. And, and he was like, oh, I just don't think that I can come now. You know, like I've just got so excited about you. And I'm like, this little bitch has problems coming, which is fine. Sometimes we all do, you know? And he put it on me. He like made me think that I squirted, which I can't decide if that's like cool or not. You know, what do you guys think about that? It's like such a weird form of like, is it like sexual assault? Like, have I been assaulted? Mm. Uh, no, I guess that's not funny. One thing, one thing I did that apparently was really not funny, it was like when we were learning about rape, which was like freshman year of college, you do a lot of training about it, right? and I was hooking up with this senior and I was falling asleep, I was so tired. I was like, oh, my brain is breaking. I literally said, I was like, I wanna have sex, but I also wanna go to sleep, I'm so tired, you know, college, whatever. And, um, and then he was like, oh, it's okay, I'll just kiss all over you as I fall asleep. Um, and I was like, mmm, rapey. And he like jumped off me and got so upset at me for saying that. And I was like, he was like, I take rape seriously. I was like, okay. I was like, we all take rape seriously. <laughs> yeah. I was like, now you're making me feel bad about a joke, you know? Um, yeah, he cheated on me and then married the girl that he cheated on me with, which is cool. Um, it's fine, who cares about cheating? They're like, I mean, whatever. Um, but yeah, okay, I guess I'm supposed to leave now, um, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, I love you guys too. <laughs> okay, bye. No one ever wants to come back on stage after the sentence, we all take rape seriously, is said. <laughs> but I'll do it, because it's not true. When Brian Fontaine and I were in jail, I didn't take it seriously at all. <laughs> I just took it. That's all right, he's drunk and he doesn't remember it tonight. Uh, <laughs> by the way, Sabette came up here and I introduced Sabette as a virgin and then Sabette's first joke, she says, I did sex with a nerd. Which is exactly how a nerd would explain doing sex. I did sex. I do sex frequently. No one do sex more than me. I do sex all the time. 
but you don't know her. She goes to open mics in the city. All right. Guys, we are getting closer and closer to Nate Izquierdo going up on stage. Nate Izquierdo, what's in that glass? Just club soda. Just club soda. By the way, everybody, Nate, Nate has to run a marathon, and he really doesn't want anyone to tempt him with free alcohol. So please, do not tempt him with free I mean, I'm driving him, but do not tempt him with free alcohol. And he's got a hotel for the night, but do not tempt him with free alcohol. He's um, a good boy. But not a proud boy. Um, well, he could be a proud boy. His dad's Cuban-American, like an actual immigrant, so probably. His dad might actually be a proud boy. His dad has killed people for political causes before. Uh, your next... Your next comic. Your next comic. What a treat. What a delight. Still running Ipanema? Yeah. Still running Ipanema, everybody... Every Monday at 9. Every Monday at 9. Every Monday at 9, and you all have proved that you love comedy shows that start at 9. Put your hands together for Flo! Thank you, thank you for putting your hands together and creating sound with your palms. I love that. That's my favorite thing. Um, hey everybody, comedy, right? Uh, I just got here in my jerk-off powered time machine. Boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> I'm in I'm an avid stoner. I just believe it's the best form of capital punishment. Jobs paid Yo-Yo Ma to perform the cello suite as he died? What? That's true. It's crazy, right? Um, in the same vein, I was hired to tell this next joke as the Queen of England died. I got this weird thing for Asian women. It's a sombrero. Some people think I'm weird. What gave it away? But I'm not, I'm not weird, okay? I'm just like everybody else in this room, I have a glove box. And of course, in that box, I have gloves. No, wait! In my glove box, I have a box. In that box, I hold gloves. Uh, uh, in my glove box, box gloves? It's boxing gloves. I fucked that one up. That's... I'm too high! I make uh, child pornography. Uh, Whoa. Not not porn um, with children, porn for children. It's like the it's like the Wiggles, but way sexier. Uh, I've started putting a, a a vest on my bicycle so I can take it into grocery stores with me. This none of this is comfortable right now. I don't know why I decided to get up here. Uh, yeah. Working it. Working what? I, <laughs> my calves, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I've started. I've started putting a, a a vest on my bicycle bicycle so I can take it into stores with me. And uh, uh, people say like, Oh, is that your service bike? I'm like, Yeah. yeah. What's your disability? Well, I'm poor. <laughs> I've been thinking about getting top surgery. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's get it. I'm gonna get my asshole sewn shut. <laughs> this dude's a top because he did not laugh. Uh, 
I, uh, I masturbate religiously. I, I don't want to do it, but my parents make me. <laughs> listen, listen, everybody, there's two types of Jeeps in this world. Yeah. There's two types of Jeeps. Jeeps with uh, don't tread on me license plates and uh, Jeeps with dream catchers in the, in, you know, hanging in the rearview window. And, uh, <laughs> they both listen to too much Joe Rogan. <laughs> I changed all my passwords to uh, September 11th, uh, but I, I don't remember why. <laughs> If I, I wish, I wish I never forgot my passwords. That would be convenient. Um, if I masturbate for charity, does that count as an honorable discharge? No. <laughs> yes. I'll leave you on this one. Once I get down from here, what the, what the fuck am I doing up here? Who told me to get up here? That's crazy. That was a bad idea. Who, who encouraged that? My friend. Uh, my friend is a sous chef, and uh, he gets really mad when I call him that. He's like, "Man, I went to I went to school. I'm a lawyer, dude." <laughs> Thank you. I'll bring back up your host, Jacob McFadden. <laughs> Keep it over Flow, everybody. I don't know who told Flo to get up there, but I do know that Carlton is selling the footage to a Trump super PAC right now. It's gonna be spliced into every football game. <laughs> also, hey, Flo? Flo. Flo, Flo, Flo. Phenomenal balance. Okay. I, would've, I would've broken my knees doing that. All right, your next comic. Wow. Hold on, let me read the intro she wrote. Wow. 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 What a comic. Your next comic is... Oh, wow. Hope you guys are ready for your next comic. Because wow. Three underscores. Wow. <laughs> Megan Richard! Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Oh my God. Thanks, you guys. Oh, oh. Wow. Okay. Wow. 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 You're telling me. Okay. <laughs> So you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys. My friend Kirsten, she recently started dating this guy, Jeremiah, and it is going boom, absolutely coconut bananas, okay? I'm talking romance, you know? Uh, she is siphoning me just daily updates at this point, just <laughs> And um, to catch you up, they fully just met, but they are getting married. <laughs> I never say that. I never say that, you guys. But it, it is just going so meatball scene, Lady and the Tramp, you know? Just uh, two dogs, one noodle. Okay, here's the Cocker Spaniel. Ignore the phone. I, uh, I'm learning. Okay. <laughs> this is a Cocker Spaniel. This is the garbage trash dog. It's like a... You have the meatball... And then they kiss. These dogs straight up kiss. <laughs> no tongue. No tongue. You guys, dogs literally only kiss with tongue. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, but it is, um, it's inspiring, you know? Noodle stuff. <laughs> Connection. <laughs> In a way, are we not all slurping the same really, really long noodle as a society? <laughs> yeah, I went there. <laughs> like
like these dogs, they thought they were enjoying their own individual portion of pasta. <laughs> it's family style, baby. <laughs> and we're all just mouths agape, just slurping on the same really, really long noodle, just choking on life's giant schlong as units. <laughs> And isn't that what it's all about, really? Just uh, slobbing on life snobs side by side with your friends. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> so I did write that bit about the um, unhoused gentleman uh, dog, Jeremiah, a little bit prematurely. He did turn out to be just, just the worst. <laughs> just the absolute worst. Uh, I did, I did meet him briefly before they broke up because they broke up. Um, and, uh, I met him over FaceTime. He had been fasting for 48 hours for spiritual reasons. Um, I'm going to reiterate that his name is Jeremiah, so follow your instincts here. He also doesn't masturbate, and he does, like, give off that energy, you know? It's like, go home and have a wank, okay? <laughs> Um, uh, let's see. Recently, I was dating a man. Uh, he told me that he didn't want to be exclusive with me. <laughs> I know. I also was shocked. <laughs> floored, honestly. Or should I say, pelvic floored. The pussy grip. <laughs> oh my god. I got lockjaw from the shock alone. <laughs> Good one. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I just, I really can't overstate how genuinely baffled I was that he, he didn't want to lock all of this down. <laughs> like, uh, that would be crazy. That would be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, library books, am I right? <laughs> Where are they? Where are they? Um, I actually think it's very unethical that libraries market themselves as a free public resource. <laughs> You're just a worse Barnes and Noble. Yeah. I'm paying full price for dirty books I can't find. <laughs> um, I'll end on this one. Um, are you ever dating someone and you want like the bare minimum, but uh, when you have COVID, they don't even want to do butt stuff? <laughs> That's all I have. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, just speaking professionally, when you have COVID, it's the perfect time to do butt stuff. Everyone knows that. Get up for Megan Richards, everybody. The only comic up here tonight in Jenko jeans. And I appreciate that. Megan's uh, dating a guy who uh, gives off the energy that doesn't jack off, which is just another way of saying he smells like a Bradford pear tree. Uh, <laughs> By the way, hey, just uh, before we continue the show, everyone, just in the interest of the quorum, a lot of people know this. I used to be an instructor at VCU, and I, I hate to, like, show that off and make it a thing. Oh, Damien, you didn't know that? That's fine. Damien, stand up, please. Stand up. Come out this way. Now, Damien, when you went into the bathroom, was the door closed when you went to the bathroom? And then what, did, did the whole show, has the door been open? No. You should probably close the door after you go to the bathroom, don't you think? You did not close it. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, class, did he close the door after he went to the bathroom? No. And he did not lock the door, by the way. She, just so you know, we are sending you to the counselor's office. Uh, if you would close the door, please. Very respectful. Don't lock it. That's uh, going to be a problem. There's no coat hangers in this building. We can't unlock it. You may return to your seat. Uh, well, okay. You know what? I hope he poops the anger right out. Sometimes we all need a long time. Uh, 
Honestly, I would chastise you. You should knock before you go in, but in this situation where there's performance going on, no, I agree. I agree. In this particular situation, you're fine. Um, Damien, you can sit down now. It's a... <laughs> I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't realize you'd get this, I don't want to say butt hurt, um, about leaving the bathroom door open. I have wrestling nigga face, fuck that. Well, I didn't say that, but I am nodding along. Um, <laughs> all right, anyway, Silver, delete that. Um, by the way, I watched one of these, yeah, I watched one of these the other day, the amount of times I say Silver, delete that, and it's not deleted, Never. it's like a free service. I should probably expect that. Um, your next comedian coming to the stage is uh, he's a great guy, he's a mine inspector, um, recently put out of work by Helene. Uh, everybody, put your, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that Kate's extended family just died. Uh, everybody, put your hands together. It's just about the bathroom door, man, it's cool. Put your hands together for a man who respects the bathroom. It's Kale Moore! How we doing, home sweet home? Yeah. I like, uh, I like that uh, he felt the need to point out that Nate was Cuban. Because I feel like Nate looks like a mix between Tony Montana and Lenny from Of Mice and Men. <laughs> and, and Lenny's retarded. That's not even a nationality. Your point. <laughs> Did everybody have a you know speaking of, of swarthy explorers? <laughs> Did everybody have a good Indigenous Peoples Day? Yeah. yeah. Did anybody get off work? Oh, uh, yeah. See, I, I work for the government, so uh, I did get the day off, uh, but I, I work for the Commonwealth of Virginia. The funny part about Indigenous Peoples Day is that the Commonwealth of Virginia still recognizes it officially as Columbus Day. I love it because they're like, you can have the day off, but you're going to be racist about it. <laughs> I don't care if you live in Rappahannock or Tappahannock or Potomac Mills. You're going to honor this Italian moron. <laughs> He's right up there with Al Pacino. Now, ever since I first learned that Christopher Columbus was Italian, now I, I can't. He's Italian. Thank you. We're gonna have to get Jacob back up here. Uh, no, he's he is Italian, and ever since I learned that fact, now I can't picture him as anything except Tony Soprano. I just imagine his navigator go, "T, I don't think we're going the right way." He's like, "Would you shut the fuck up for a second? I'm trying to discover the new fucking world here." Why don't you pull your head out of your ass, start looking around for spices, all right? Some cinnamon, some cardamom, anything. Uh, I, uh, I moved here from the Midwest a couple years ago, and uh, it's been a bit of a culture shock. And uh, one of the things that I think was the biggest change is like how everybody here does drugs. <laughs> No, we do drugs here. I mean, we do drugs in the Midwest, too. I meant the way you do drugs. Because we have much more folksy ways of doing drugs. Like a bump of coke is a tootski. And when, you know, they're passing the mirror around, everybody says, oh, don't mind if I do. And then, of course, when the bag is empty, we do the, uh, well, <sighs> I, uh, guess I should get going. Uh, I went to the Ren Fair recently. Uh, yeah, it was a really good time. Uh, you know, I, I already had gout, so I felt like it was appropriate. 
It's the king's disease, you know. That and syphilis. Syphilis is pretty kingly, too. I'm still working my way up to that one, though. Uh, no, I, at one point, I, I think a girl broke her foot or something because these two guys ran by, like, carrying her between them. And a guy was walking in front going, Make way! Make way! I'm like, is this really a situation where you need to stay in character? <laughs> like, I really hope the first aid tent just isn't a big jar of leeches and a bunch of knives. Uh, I'll close it out with this. Uh, I have a drinking problem. Yeah! Not that kind of drinking problem. It's just, uh, you know, I keep telling myself I'm going to get into mixology. And so what happens is I go to ABC and I buy the ingredients for a big fancy cocktail. And then I remember how lazy I am. And so I just pick up a case of beer and then I drink that instead. <laughs> So now I just have a bunch of unopened liquor bottles covering all of the flat surfaces of my house. Like I'm an alcoholic Willy Wonka. I'm like, this entire living room is whiskey. The coffee table, the TV, the Nintendo Switch, you can drink it. And then I trap a bunch of children in my house and I make them fight to the death for it. All right, that's my time. I've been Kale Moore. Thank you, guys. Kale Moore, everybody. Keep it going for Kale Moore. I love when Kale Moore comes out. He's got the same beard I did when I was 14, and I miss it. <laughs> Kate and Nubu when I was 14, we were engaged. Uh, it's just a thing. All right, uh, your next comic is often called the creed of taking a shit. Cause he does it with doors wide open. He is one of our favorite performers because he believes in transparency. He believes in an open society. He believes in messaging me later cause he's mad about how I kept driving this bit into the ground. He is a good man, a strong man, and he shall be a Levon. Now listen, we're gonna, all right. One person likes Elton John, uh, maybe a little too much. Okay, we're gonna just move on from my horrible intro for your next comic. Guys, we are down to our final few comics. After this comic is gonna be Nate Izquierdo, who is uh, a Cuban American actor. Um, he was in an episode of The Wire. Um, for which uh, he's still paying off his sack after fees. Um, but before that, a man who would never make you pay to see him. He would just open the door up at a festival and you could see him sit in the port john It's our friend, Damien. Hey, look at this drop out of me, Anderson. I'm just like wondering why you decided to create out of all fictional characters. That's all I was What's up, my niggas? How we doing tonight? Y'all fell for that shit. Hook, line, and sinker, didn't y'all? Yeah, yeah, man. Nah, y'all are good white people. You can relax. 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 Nah. <laughs> All right. I'm Haitian. No, I don't want to eat your pets. Your pets are disgusting. We, we ate our... We ate... Okay. We ate our own pets. We ate our own pets. No, I'm joking. But I have like, all right, so we're spo my family's sponsoring a bunch of my Haitian cousins. We're trying to make them citizens right now. You know what I mean? That's, yeah, it's all right. But <laughs> they're, um, but they ask, they're like, all right, y'all ever watch King of the Hill? Y'all remember that episode when like Hank discovered he had a Japanese brother, but it's just like him? That is how like it is with my cousins, but it's like it's it's like eight of us, right? So they, yeah, all right, but we're all they're all the same age as me and everything. And then they come up to me during dinner and they're like, "Yo, man, where's your girl at?" Because I never don't I don't bring home girl like white women to my house. So they're like they're like 
They're like, yo, where's your girlfriend at? You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm like, yo, no, chill, chill. I'm focused on myself and all that shit. And after, you know, after I was like feeling good about it, I was like, yo, they, they, they really want to get to know me. They want to like, you know, they want to see what I'm doing. You know what I mean? That's love. But then the straight dude brain kicked in, and I was like, oh, these niggas think I'm gay. <laughs> and, uh, they either think I'm gay or I get no bitches, which is, I feel like, I feel like. I'd rather them think I'm gay, cause that's easier to explain. You know what I mean? Cause like, get like, if at least well, like if they think I'm gay, they're just gonna be like, oh, like I can be like, no, nah, nigga, I, I can name top, I can name my top five porn stars right now, like, and I just name them, and they're like, all right, he's not gay, but he's disgusting and he needs to be in jail. But if if I if I try to explain, I don't get no bitches. I am, I'm gonna, no, I, I fucked this bitch, I fucked this bitch, I fucked this bitch. Look, I woke up in a white girl's house last week and she had a, a random tarot card reading poster and I got scared. <laughs> and they're gonna be like, he's in denial and he's in a douchebag. Like, we should lock him up. We should lock him up. Right. I'm, I love my cousins. They just got a house, so let's applaud for that. <laughs> they're out of my house. Anybody single or in a relationship here? I always love asking that question. There's always one person to be like, wait a minute, wait. I'm clearly single, as y'all can tell. <laughs> but I, I, all right, so I, I mainly single because I'm trying to focus on myself and I'm just trying to like get my shit together. You know what I mean? But I recently like re-downloaded Bumble just to see what the fuck is all this dating app shit is about. And I saw like the queen bee from my high school. You know, that one girl that was like, the hottest girl in your high school is that was getting fucked by a grown man for some reason. Fuck. <laughs> that nigga went to my high school. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I saw, that was the first profile that showed up. And her profile said, I have two kids, postpartum. Yes, that is my husband in the picture. Yes, he is aware. And then, and then I go, oh, that's fucking gross. So I swiped right. I swiped right. I, swiped right. I have no shame, ladies and gentlemen. I have no shame. I have no shame. Either it, I, I feel like being single, like guys, right? That, being single as a like a straight guy is weird, right? Cause like having a crush is weird, right? Cause you know, you you have to ask masculine. You have to act masculine at the wrong times, right? Like for me, as like, I don't know, you at the club with your homies. And then a nigga's telling you to shoot white people. This is a very offendable offense. Niggas have died for this. Niggas have died for this. Niggas have died for this, right? So I have to ask, I have to act like, I have to be like, nah, nigga, what's up? What's up, bro? What's up? Nah, no, what's good? What's good with you? And they're like, where your mama from? Where your mama stay? And then I have to do all that bullshit. But then, but then like, say the same night, the fight calms down, the same thing happens, and then my crush walks in, and then I look at my boys and I'm like, do you guys do you guys think she liked my fit? <laughs> do you guys 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 think that when she smelled a hint of my cologne that she she looked off into the distance and thought about a life together and our kids <laughs> and our grandkids and then we 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 died like we died old together. I died first because that's how that works and then she died a couple years later. <laughs> Do you guys think that? I mean, obviously I don't, I'm a man. I hold my feelings in and then lash out on my loved ones like a real nigga. That's me. my name's Daniel. Name's Daniel. I normally take a word or a phrase out of the last person's set and riff on it. So allow me to do that. A real... I'm just kidding. It's not 2012 anymore. Uh, <laughs> all right, that was Damien Anderson, everybody. Give it up for Damien Anderson. Come on. He hasn't, you know, he, he's the bathroom door. We're getting over that now. And now we're just on to Damien. Damien is great. Damien, you're great. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. I said you were great. Yeah, yeah, just remember that. Okay. Now, normally when you have a Haitian performer, you put a Dominican on before you bring a Cuban. But I don't have one. 
So instead, I'll just do a short speech. Your next comic used to be a regular around the scene. He's a good man. He's a great man. In fact, it was very awkward at the breakfast after my wedding because everyone told my father-in-law he did a better speech than he did. <laughs> Which he brings up all the fucking time. Yeah. In a sort of way that makes me feel guilty for inviting my friend to be there for my wedding. <laughs> Aside from that, he is a phenomenal performer. He is, um, actually, he's the face of Stone Brewing. That's an x-ray of his head. That's his skull. And then they, they added on like the little Cuban horns of freedom. Um, aside from that, if you ever see me wearing a brewery shirt, it's because Nate worked for them at some point and it's free swag from five years ago, six years ago, 10 years ago, 13 years ago. Uh, I'm Magic Hat all the way, number nine, ride or die, baby. It's a snow catcher. Uh, your next comic, his biggest credit, for sure, is he open for Charles Ellis before pedophilia took him down? Oh my God! Hey, when he was helping Charles Ellis make money and promote his empire of filth, we did not know that he was doing sex with children. He enabled it for sure, but at the time it was completely innocent. Um, also a, a huge booster of Ray Bullock. But anyways, no, it's good, it's good. There's other people that he knows. Um, Clay Schof, um, yeah, Michael Jackson. He said, you know what you should do? You should be white. That's what he said to him. But that's not a race thing. That's just what Cubans always tell immigrants to do. Immigrants are darker than always be white. That's what they say. Your next comic, um, this is how, your next comic told me the wrong time for his fucking wedding. An hour and a half before his wedding. And I asked him several times, I said, it's at four, right? He went, nope, 4.30. I said, four? Because the thing says four. He said, nope, 4.30. So my wife and I walked up to the glass doors in front of the room where he got married, right as they kissed and did a parade around the room directly in front of us at the end of their fucking wedding, when we showed up exactly on time. And my wife wants me to tell Nate that he's totally forgiven, it's no big deal. Silver, stop recording. It's not forgiven. She remembers. She will always remember. Then he told me to take his killer father, his ex-Special Forces father with 68 confirmed man kills said, he's a little too drunk. Will you keep him company? My mom doesn't want to deal with this anymore. Also, do your impression of your da my dad for him. Oh, your dad? Yeah. His dad was super drunk. A bourbon's like, hey, man, my son, I love him. I can't believe he got married to a woman. I thought he was Marocon, you know? My wife and I are so proud. But hey, you got everyone to do the Jew chair thing with him. Not cool. Your dad did tell me the Hava Nagila that I planned at your wedding was not cool. And in fairness, since no one in the wedding at all is Jewish, including myself, probably not cool. Um, anyways, your next comic. A phenomenal performer. A real, if I can culturally appropriate, a mensch of a man. Oh my God. The son of a killer, certified by the U.S. government. 68 times. 68 confirmed kills. He would have done one more, but that would have been too loving. And as Nate will tell you, he's never loved his son. Until he got married to a woman. Which is cool. Which is cool. Which is cool. And it's still happening, so it's cool. No kids, but still cool. No confirmation, but cool. handsome. Oh yeah, his dad is handsome. <laughs> Nate's like if you took his dad and aged him 20 years. All right, guys, your next comic. Phenomenal performer. One of my dearest friends. 
a man I love, and all the comics who are watching this, if I liked you, this is what it would be like. Uh, <laughs> put your hands together for Nate Izquierdo! Hey guys, how are we doing? Let's give it up for Jacob one more time. Jacob. His uh, wife prepared a lovely dinner for me tonight. It was great. He was there too, I just want to clarify. Um, you know, actually I do want to be clear. I do want to be clear a little bit. It is nice, as long as I've known Jacob, as close as that we are, it is nice knowing that if I asked his wife, she would say yes to a date. It's a really good confidence booster. And what makes it even better is I know if he asked my wife, she would say no. And so, to live with that, such a good feeling. Uh, I wanna try to... Yes, she turned up your hearing aids. My wife is old. I don't mean to brag, but she's 12 years older than me. I'm an ally. Love my elder wife. Forgot this is recorded. Uh, she hates when I say that. Uh, before I get in the set, uh, I gotta address a few things first. Uh, not a big fan of being roasted by Alan Van on Rumspringa. But we're, we're just gonna chip chop away through. Uh, for those who don't know, it has been four years. Four years since I last performed. Oh. Thank you. Four years since I've seen your beautiful faces. You guys are all beautiful. One I'll go in the audience. Won't name names, but you know who you are. Four years. I'm really great to be back to see some old faces. Kate, Alan, Cornelius, Terabithia, Daryl in the back. So happy to see you, brother. But it's also about making new friends, meet new people. What is your name? I didn't catch it. I was in the bathroom, I'm so sorry. I caught the interview set though. Oh, Megan. Megan. Megan, spell it. M-E-G-A-N. Do it the right way, hell yeah. It's the right way. That is how, that is how you do it. Uh, actually, I have a question. So I don't, soon, Megan, how old are you? Do you mind me asking, is that rude? Please. <laughs> then, you know what, uh, officially, I'm gonna ask you how old are you. <laughs> 28, that's incredible, same age. Uh, you know what, yeah, actually, that is, I'm gonna wrap that up. That is the end of the crowd work segment of the set. Not good at crowd work. It's not, I don't know how Winston Hodges does it. He, he does a really good job. Uh, I, so the problem with crowd work is I'm a narcissist. Uh, I don't do the act of listening. Uh, Megan correct spelled the correct way, so I remember that. I'll forget it in a couple minutes. Sorry. So I don't want to do it. Like it's just not my form of comedy. I don't. I don't dog it. I'm also not a one-liner. I've never written a punchline my whole life. I prefer. I, I prefer like a long story format uh, when I perform. Actually, if I'm being honest, my favorite way to perform is when I'm driving to the venue and I'm practicing my set in the car alone. That is my favorite, and it's nothing against you guys. It's nothing against you guys. It's just that there's a familiarity with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've known myself for 34 years. There's a comfort there that we just can't, can't reach. All right, let's get, let's get into the set, I guess. I don't know how many people are after me, but I gotta tell you, I'm gonna go over so much time. It is gonna be nice. What is he gonna do? Bane me for four years? Like I can, I can do it. Actually, uh, uh, let's try. Let's try, uh, let me try crowd work. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna generally try it. Because where else are we gonna be? What are we gonna do? We got nothing else to do, guys. Let's try it. All right. Raise your hand. Only if one, the answer applies to you, and two, you feel comfortable sharing. Raise your hand. All right. What would Winston do? Um, all right. Raise your hand. Who here has a dad who's dead? Hell yeah. Dead dads. Dead dads. Do you mind me asking if it's not too personal? How long ago did your father pass? Uh, I forget. You forget? Wow. I don't know if you've heard my dad's alive, so it sucks to suck. <laughs> Big fan of dads. Right? Who loved it? Dads, right? Dads. 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 
Bit of a divisive way to start the show, I understand, sorry. But give me a break, it's been four years. Just give me a second, all right? Give me some patience. Worst thing to say to an audience. Come on, be patient. Come on, actually, take my hand. All right, let us bow our heads. Oh, Mother our Lord. We pray to ye to give the audience strength to be open-minded and patient. Oh, Mother our Lord. We pray that you give the performer let him be as loosey as you see goosey. Oh, Mother our Lord. Let him be the silliest of all billiest. And this we pray. Amen. No. Amen. All woman. All you want? No. All day. All day. Okay. Yeah, I don't mean to brag. I got pretty woke in the last four years. <laughs> don't like how that implies that I was not woke five years ago. Yeah, it was a big bigot five years ago. Yeah, we big, big five years. Well, you guys know how you were five years ago. Yeah, that was not a good riff. I agree. All right, let's be done riffing. Let's actually look. You know what? No. I'm not done riffing. I don't want to leave on that sour taste, so I want some, I want some validation. I'm a damn ally. Do you not hear I said all day? I'm an ally. Not only am I an ally because I have multiple trans friends. I'm so ally -y, I have a trans friend whom I dislike. That's bravery. It has nothing to do with their physical transition. It has everything to do with their personality now. It's not good. I met this person the summer before college, very soft-spoken, she recently transitioned to he, but the personality they chose was like alpha bro, which I do not care for. I'm talking manspreading. We're at a bar together. We'll have a full pint of beer and he'll go, hey, we should get a second one to chug. I'm like, what? I'm 34, what are you talking about? I have gray hair on my shoulder. Which really fucked me up. I came out of the womb looking like this. I was emotionally ready to be salt and pepper, old looking man, but for some reason I thought shoulder hair was sacred. Like that one really fucked me up. I saw the gray hair. But they're like, oh, come on, come on. We'll do like a Jaeger bomb. I was like, what the fuck? We're not doing a Jaeger bomb. And now they're really getting into nut checking, which I feel like is crossing a line. And it just bewilders me that this person, for years, they just had this hidden thing inside them. They're like, until I can present it, I will not be happy. But the person that was inside them was a Kyle. That is so... <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, Nate, no one's forcing you to be friends with them anymore. Uh, yeah, next try. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna break up with the trans friend. Okay. <laughs> Even with all of you knowing the context now, if you saw it all live, you would not defend me. Oh, man. You know it's gonna suck. Uh, I have not done the written material yet. Let's do it. All right, let's get, all right, let's do it. Let's do it. I don't wanna do it either, but let's just do it. Let's get rid of it, let's just stir it. Let's, all right, one more riff, one more riff. Uh, what do you guys wanna talk about? I heard racial identity. Let's get into it. See, what I did there is I made it seem like I'm doing a riff, but really, this is the prepared material. So, spoiler alert, I am of Cuban descent. <laughs> it has been said so much tonight that I've never felt so seen. <laughs> because usually, Cuban, not on top of the list. When people look at me, they don't go Hispanic. I usually get, so I, as I said, I came out of the womb looking like this. Uh, I was 11 years old during 9-11. I had racist people come up to me and they're like, you terrorist. <laughs> And I was like, I don't have a driver's license. Was, what an insane theory that I could fly a plane at 11. Have you seen how many buttons are in the fucking cockpit? And also, you know, but fuck it, one more rip. It's 2024. 
There's still so many fucking buttons and cockpits. What's going on? But I'm very racially ambiguous, and not even just the bigotry I get, I also get it from people from different races thinking I'm part of them. I get a lot of Italian, I get Greek. Most recently, I've been getting Lebanese. I don't know if they're like a hot new flavor. Um, so before I got married two years ago, I decided to go to a professional barber instead of the Korean ladies down the road. Yeah, I give them business. I mean, wow. Who do you go to, a white guy? For any jobs over here, wow. Did you not hear I'm an ally? Did you not hear that? Did you not make it such a... My wife is 12 years older than me. I'm an ally. You can, please. I'll be, the whole time I'll be distracted. You don't see, you don't see him come. No, no, I mean, I, don't, I was worried about your comfort. I went to a barber shop. I didn't know it was mostly ran by Turkish people. I picked the barber because his name was Mr. Mucho. I was like, hell yeah, he'll know what to do. So I sat down. And he goes, uh, Turkish. Excuse me? He's like, Turkish. No? And he's like, yeah, you're Turkish. I'm like, oh, no, Cuban. And he's like, same hair. Which is a fun fact. <laughs> if you guys are ever in trivia, and they're like, whose hair is similar to Turkish? Fucking double point that answer. You got it. It's what it is. It's Cuban. Same thing, I was at uh, LAX, not to brag, I travel. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty big airport too, not to brag. I get in the Uber, I don't know what it is about my face, but people are like, I'm gonna tell you some things. Um, similar to the barber, the, uh, I get in, and you know what, let me just pause. I've gained a lot of uh, 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 comfort from you guys. I have to remind you, uh, I am an ally. Um, I'm not gonna do the voice. Okay, I'm not gonna do the voice. What? But the voice might slip. Okay, that is not my fault, it'll make sense in a second. He gets in the, I get in the car, he goes, Lebanese. I go, no. I think he thought I flew from there. So I say, Virginia. And he's like, no, 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 no. Lebanese. <laughs> no, uh, Cuban. And he's like, same thing. Which is another fun fact. And he says, he says to me, he goes, there are two races, white and black. And I was like, well, well, I don't, I'm Hispanic, you're Lebanese. He's like, white. We're white, Jesus is white, we are Jesus. So I was like, oh, okay. I'm learning a lot. And he goes on to list places. He's like, Brazil, white. Mexico, white. Korea, there are three races. <laughs> Which I was very endeared by. Like, he was just like, oh, everything is white. And then he remembered ramen noodles. He's like, oh, wait, I miscalculated. Uh, there's one more. <laughs> What's been your favorite part so far? What's been your favorite part so far? My favorite part? Ah, great. <laughs> what's, your, what's your favorite part? Ramen noodles. Ramen noodles. We just, oh, yeah. Fresh. That's one of the new jokes I wrote. I don't know why I grabbed that. I didn't drink it. That was a real new mistake on my part. So I have, Goobie Goobie Goobie. So I have a problem with racial identity. Not only because I've had just incorrect racism the in my entire life, but also it was my dad. So as you've heard, he's killed people. Uh... <laughs> A lot, like, you know what, let's just go ahead and do that joke. <laughs> let's just go ahead and do that joke. Uh, so my dad, when he came over from Cuba, he was six, very impressionable. He came over to Cuba and he was like, I'm American. This is what we do. We are American. And he grew up, he joined the army, and he became a part of the special forces. And I, as a kid, he would tell me, you are white. Very interesting. And we'll get to it. We'll put a pen in that. Just remember what, remember what my dad said to me, that I'm a white person. So my dad, in the military, so I remember as a kid, I thought Army was like the coolest thing ever. I was like, he's the toughest man in the world. So you're in the playground, you're like, who's dad could be the poo, whatever. And I was like, I started off way too strong. I was like, my dad's in the Army. It just led to so many lies. They're like, well, my dad was in the Marine Force. Well, my dad. And then finally, one guy, one kid said, I don't know why I said guy. We're not 30-year-olds hanging out. 
in the playground. Uh, we were, I don't know, pick a kid age. I don't fucking know. It's your, I can't do all the work. Uh, one of the kids, he said, well, my dad is the president's assassin. As in like, the president tells him to assassinate people. Not only did I believe this was a real job, I was like, this is the coolest job. So I was trying to like, all right, get some favor. I was like, let me, all right, let me go talk to my dad, dad, get some data. Really find out how tough he is. So I went to my dad and I said, dad, have you ever killed anyone before? Which is a heavy question. And there's only one way to answer it and that's by saying that it's something you don't talk about. But it's how you say it. If you say it like that, you've killed nobody. If you say like, that is something you don't talk about, you've got like one or two motherfuckers. But the way my dad said it, my dad said, that is something you do not talk about. And as an eight year old, I was like, my dad's killed everyone. That's crazy. <laughs> so this big tough man says that I'm white. I'm like, okay, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so I spent a majority of my whole life just being like, okay, so I'm a white guy. And then I started learning about other races. And I was like, well, Dad, I think I'm Hispanic. And he's like, well, no, you check the box white because Hispanic is an ethnicity, not a race. And I said, well, there's still the fucking box. Well, what do I do? And he was like, so finally I had to get him to convince, I had to convince him when I was applying to college to let me check Hispanic because there were people with 2% Native American and they were like, woo, Native American all day, baby. So that was the first time that Dad allowed me to be Hispanic. Now this motherfucker, years later, starts doing the 23 in me. He gives me a call. He goes, Nate, you're not gonna believe it. Scottish. Scottish, baby. And I'm like, all right. And this is before the wedding. He's like, I wanna wear a kilt at your wedding. I'm like, okay, fi whatever, fine. And he shows me a photo of the kilt, and it was green. And for those who weren't at my wedding, Jacob, uh, the color scheme. Oh, I tried to be there, you motherfucker. The color scheme was like a beautiful red wine, like a nice purplish grape. You know what I'm saying? Like a blend of those. And I was like, well, Dad, just bring like a purple kilt. And I sent him some options. And he said, you can't just change the family colors. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking? You just found out you're Scottish. <laughs> So I was like, give me the paper, let me see what it is. And I looked at it, it was 6% scotch, 6%. And here's a little history fact, you guys are Cuban, you might know this. So Cuba is basically a melting pot. A lot of people came over from Cuba, it was uh, not from Cuba, to Cuba, from Africa, from Europe, from Brazil, from Spain, big melting pot. Yes, there was an indigenous race that lived there too, but they were fucking slaughtered, so who cares, baby? Like, they didn't do it the way we did it, where like we kept them around and now we have to talk about them in history. The way they dealt with the Cuban and indigenous people, they just fucking slaughtered, don't bring it up at all, but they were originally people there. It's a tiny island. Was that too real, guys? Yeah, was that too real? You don't know that about your history. You're one of the white ones. So it's a melting pot. So there's multiple colored Cubans. For example, Ian and Kirsten, brother and sister, we are the exact same amount percentage of Cuban, but they are very white. While I just present white. Slightly different. I'm popping. I'm going down the list of the 23andMe, 40% Nigerian, which means technically I'm of Afro-Cuban descent, which means I've been black this whole time. What do you, what do you do? I, I, okay, for, let me just say real quick, we're gonna explore this for a little bit, but let me just put, let me put everyone at ease. I'm not gonna say the word. I'm not gonna say it. Even though I'm darker than Drake, I feel like I should be able to say it. Even though I'm darker than Fat Joe, who recently, I don't know if you guys know this, Fat Joe recently did an interview and he was like, hey, no, 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 he found out he had no black in him whatsoever. He just grew up in a black neighborhood. He's like, yeah, I just thought I was black this whole time. And they're like, well, are you gonna stop saying the inward Fat Joe? And he's like, no, I don't think so. And he's like, because I identify as black. 
which I don't know how I feel about until I know what he feels about transgender. Like, that's why, like, let me hear all of your opinions before I let that one slide. So even though darker than them and they say it, I'm not going to say it. Okay, that's, I agree. Because he gets to say it, I can't. Anyway, what do you do? What do you do as a 34-year-old when you discover you're newly black? The only correct answer is not, you just keep doing what I'm doing now. You know, I lost my virginity at 22. I had my first kiss at 21. If I knew I was black, this whole time, I would have had a completely different swagger about me, which is a completely white thing to say. So maybe I'm not that black. Yeah. He's right. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, okay. Oh. I'm actually doing pretty good on time by going over on time. All right, folks, let's get out of race. <laughs> let's do a lighter topic. Let's talk about mental disabilities. Um, I am neurodivergent. Yeah, you are. I'm also self-diagnosed autistic. Uh, I have to put that claimer, a disclaimer ahead of time because I had a few friends. So it was actually my wife who first diagnosed me, love her to death. Uh, and so I was like, well, I guess, yeah, it makes sense that I am uh, autistic. And so I went out and said it to a few friends, and they're like, yeah, totally, we see that 100%. <laughs> but then I had some other people who were like, no, you're not. For instance, my best friend Brittany, who's here, and also her husband, Alex. Originally, only Alex was going to come, so who's really the best friend? fucking <laughs> rude, to be honest. Rude, to be honest. I say to Brittany, my best friend who I've known for so many years, I say, I think I'm autistic. I think I'm autistic. And she goes, you're not autistic. Alex is autistic. Don't mean to blow up your spot. And to his credit, he's really good at autism. Like, like, yeah, like masking, not in his vocabulary. Like he is so good at autism. And she's like, he can't be autistic, Alex is autistic. And I was like, look, just because he's the fucking Michael Jordan of autism. Doesn't mean I don't know how to play horse, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can still dribble, you know? There is dribbling in horse. You, do, you fucking, if you're up, do two, you gotta fucking mimic it. I'm newly black, okay? He said I could say it, but I said no. I said, well, wait. <laughs> well, we talked about mental disabilities. Uh, so, I discovered that I was in uh, remedial classes. Oh, I'm gonna go so over that three minutes, brother. Uh, uh, I discovered I was in remedial classes one day. Uh, so my parents retired. And they're up in uh, Roanoke and Smith Mountain Lake. So they got water property, not to brag. Uh, so I'm swimming, I'm in my 30s, and my mom's a little wine drunk, and she goes, you're really good at swimming. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if I need that validation. And she's like, no, you remember when you were retarded? <laughs> don't, no, I don't recall that at all. So what happened was there was a year where they put me in remedial classes uh, by choice. There was no one else. The year beforehand, the year beforehand, uh, before they put me in remedial classes. Uh, so I have ADD. I love playing with toys when I was a little kid. Did all these scenarios. But I also knew it was something that adults didn't do. So I was self-conscious about playing. But I would have these giant battles. I'm playing with my toys. And my family, my mom and dad, they wanted to see their son imagine and play. And they would open the door and I would just freeze. <laughs> but I would make the scene happen in my head. I was like, hey, I'm going to fight you in a second. No, I'm going to fight you in a second. So they're like, all right, well, he just stands still in his room. Which was the first red flag. The next one. So I grew up Pentecostal. Explains a lot. Uh, for those who don't know, that is the snake handling religion, also the 
uh, in the power of Christ, and you do the shakes. That's how religion was introduced to me. It was very normal for me to see people just pass out right and left to me. Didn't really think of anything of it. And then one week, it was not, we, so we did, well, that's a, we'll talk about it later. We went to a Baptist church one time. I had a blast. But they, dad, the racist did not. Uh, yeah. So ending on this. <laughs> so we're in church. One day, my sister passes out. So the next week, I was like, well, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass out. So I'm trying so hard, guys. Like, I'm like, Jesus, get in. Here we go. I end up shitting my pants. And then they don't talk about it. Like, they go clean me up. We go home. We never address it ever again. A few months go by. And I'm bored. We're at like a JC Penny. And I was like, well, last time I shit my pants, we went home. So I started shitting myself any time I wanted to go home. So my parents were like, yeah, he just stands in his room shitting his pants all day. I think. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. This was so much fun. Thank you. Are you going to allow me to do All right. Me and Jacob. Thank you, Jacob. You should have told me. All right. We did have a surprise. We're going to do a little bit of audience participation. So I have some jokes that I usually do, but I want to hear from you guys. So who would like to read the first joke? Anybody? Okay. My nigga. I've been friends with my penis for 34 years, sure. We've had our ups and downs. Aww. Oh, I get to keep it. that, yeah. I get to keep it, guys. Uh, we got two more. Who wants to do that? Who wants to do one? Kirsten, come on. My wife's name is Peter Parker. Wait, sorry. <laughs> That's just her position. Because she jumps on my Peter, she parks right on it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, one more. Who wants to do one? You get to keep it. You get to keep it. Kate Carroll. Kate Carroll. Kate Carroll. Come on. Kate Carroll. Come on. Kate Carroll does it. <laughs> What's the difference between me and this so called comedian? I'm not some refried fairy. Oh, 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 Nate quit doing this and his life has only improved. And he did so well, he's gonna start doing this in DC and realize it sucks there. <laughs> All right, guys, we have three phenomenal comedians. I saved after Nate the best of the best because I want all of Nate's friends to stay. These are gonna be great comedians. And remember, if you leave now, we will all judge Nate forever. And I have his mailing address and we will send him shit in a box. Uh, but before Nate leaves, I have to go over a few factual corrections on his set. So, for example, Nate started out his set, he said he has a trans friend that he doesn't like anymore. And I just want to clear it up, MJ wanted to come out, but she couldn't make it. Oh my god, no! Um, also, Nate said he's 34 and he can't chug beer anymore. Hey Nate, what's your day job? What do you do, travel around the bars and get young kids to chug beer so you can drive sales? All right. Uh, Nate uh, did mention he goes to a Korean barber and he thinks that makes him a hero, but he did leave out the fact that when he went to the Korean barber, it was inside a shipping container. Which is actually a villainous thing to do. It's, uh, I went on, I went on, the, on the website for the anti, they said it's a bad thing. Uh, 
just hit that one. <laughs> By the way, if you thought it was loud during Nate's set, it's uh, not because of Nate. There were black women downstairs arguing over how to play Uno. <laughs> and I looked at it and said, I'm not getting involved. And Kate Carroll went down and did get involved. And they ignored the fuck out of her. Uh, all right, only, only two more notes here. Um, I just want to point out, Nate and I are actually good friends. I put Nate in my wedding party, and he may be the MC of his wedding. Damn. You guys know that classic position, master of ceremonies for the wedding? I got your top hat. You did. You did. I still wear that top hat around the house when I tell my wife, who makes more money than me, that this is how things are going to be done. And then I take it off and go, and that's it. The hat is full of her money when I do it. I do this. I spend all of our money doing this. Um, Nate did lose his virginity at 22, and then the... Oh, can't say that word anymore. Then the asshole wouldn't let me rent her house. Oh, shit. Remember Maria? She asked about you. Um, anyways... Uh, just to end it off, uh, Nate uh, says he's more autistic than Alex. Uh, we'll find out. After the show's over, we're going to have an autism off out of the porch. Um, I invite everyone who's here to come up and touch both of their ears and see who freaks out the most. Whoever loses the most bruises on patrons wins. Now, we're going to move this thing right along, everybody. Your next comedian is the reincarnation of the recently killed Nate Izquierdo. Put your hands together for Will Miner! Keep it going, my Jacob Big Fatted! If I'm nice to him, he'll let me come back in four years and take up so much of your time! Hell yeah! I'll be back. Dude, oh my goodness, and keep it going for Nate, everybody. Come on! He's new black! And he's Lebanese! I think! I was kind of listening. I was like, hell yeah, you go, you manager of Rainforest Cafe. You look like a really hip, like, uh, uh, activities director on a fun cruise. And that's all I had. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have 20 minutes! No, I'm sorry. Ah. All I have is five glorious minutes. Ah, I'm gonna waste each one of them. Ah, this is intimidating. I see you are jumping around so much. Oh dear. Oh boy, what are we gonna talk about tonight? Hey, mental disorders out there. Clapping up your mental disorders. Hell yeah. Where's my bipolar at? Where's the schizophrenia? Where's the PTSD? I'm having a panic attack! Why isn't anyone helping me? Ha! <laughs> Cuban, ah! <laughs> My mom is not, I think, sorry. <laughs> you know, it's funny, I was thinking of that, it's like, holy shit, I was also raised Cuban. My dad's a mechanic and my mom also hit me with a shoe. <laughs> a lot of similarities lining up there. No, I'm just kidding, I'm Italian, I'm not white. <laughs> What, what was Kale talking? Oh yeah, I thought that was so funny earlier. Like somebody was like, Christopher Columbus is Italian. And then somebody's like, he's Spanish. And I was like, thank God, that fixes everything. <laughs> he likes tacos, not pizza. I'm kidding, he's Portuguese. I think that's a country in South America. I'll look it up. Oh boy, mental disorders. You know, it's, it's seasonal. Yeah, we're going into fall, everybody. The seasons are changing. We're going into fall. I was talking to a friend of mine. They said, Will, I have seasonal depression, Will. Does anybody here have that? Anybody here have seasonal depression? Yes! Hell yeah, yes, hell yeah. Keep it going for the cross between George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. Holy shit. I've been watching you all night. I love you. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I forgot what I was talking about. Oh yeah, seasonal depression. A friend of mine was telling me they have seasonal depression, but guess what, home sweet home? <laughs> I found out a way to beat seasonal depression. Y'all all know how I beat seasonal depression? Oh, I'm always depressed. Hey. hey, come on, take that big pharma. You ain't getting my money. Tears mud in your eye, Hitler. <laughs> Fuck you, Mussolini. I don't know, it's fun. <laughs> I recently found out, I, I kind of got pissed off, like, I found out I have, I, I have ADD, I know, you see me for two minutes, you're like, that guy? No. But like, no, I found out I have ADD, I found out in a really weird way, like, I was talking to my parents, we were talking about days gone by, and they just kind of casually, they're like, oh yeah, Will, 
when you were in elementary school, your teacher tried to diagnose you with ADD, but we told him, like, tell him to just go outside. And, like, I got kind of upset with them. I got kind of upset with my mom and dad, because I was like, what the hell, mom and dad? Like, I'm almost 30-something years old. Like, I'm, oh, sorry, I'm almost 30 years old. Like, I could have gone my entire life not knowing I have ADD. How could you never tell me I have ADHD? And they just looked at me and they said, Will, bud. We've told you like 15 times, you have ADD, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's okay, they don't let me live there anymore. They're like, go out and chase that comedy dream. <laughs> they say you play home sweet home on the way up and on the way down. I'm on my way, I'm on the way out. <laughs> I will kill myself later. Oh boy, what else do I want to talk about? Oh boy, are we drinking tonight? We all, I see we're having some drinks out there. Hell yeah, go up to the bartenders, go drink. Although you gotta be careful, Richmond, you gotta be careful with your drinking. I had a bit of an incident a couple nights ago. I got so intoxicated, I got so fucked up, blackout drunk, that I woke up in bed cradling my teapot. I know what you're thinking, talk about breakfast in bed. <laughs> But no, it was crazy. I think what happened was I just got so hammered watching the movie uh, uh, Sleeping Beauty that I thought, oh, if I have sex with my teapot, it'll be turned into a woman. You know, because like that time I had sex with a pumpkin, it turned into a carriage. Yeah. Or that time I had sex with a mouse, it turned into a horse. Yeah. I know, I was having sex with that mouse, and I was like, what the hell, again? Why does this keep happening? <laughs> Keep trying to have sex with my mice, what the fuck? Alrighty, I'll leave on this one. I'll get out on the air on this one. I was talking to a gal pal of mine, and she was explaining to me how she was hooking up with a gentleman, and she said, Will, this guy had a penis that was so big, I couldn't have sex with him. It was just too big, we couldn't do it. And I was like, wow, that's never happened to me. But, like, if I give you all any kind of description, it's like, any time I've ever disrobed in front of a partner, their first re response is oftentimes, nice. Manageable. <laughs> They just kind of look at me like I'm a test they've been studying for for a long time. All right, thank you all for putting up with me. My name is Nate Iskierna. Let's keep it going for Jim McLaren. Nate Iskierna, everybody. Keep it going for him. Boy, he's getting whiter and whiter with every set. Uh, I would like to tell, well, I just recently, uh, I just recently rewatched James and the Giant Peach with my son. You guys don't realize the first 30 minutes of that movie is just a child being beaten by his old British aunts. Then a guy gives him magic worms and it's ten more minutes of being beaten by his old British hands. Then he hangs out with a cricket that smokes. And the movie ends. Anyways, that's Will Minor. <laughs> Nate, where the fuck did all your friends go? Are you really Cuban? Yeah. They would never... Well, we all knew that. We all knew that, and I'm glad to see that's your brother. So there's a chance for you to be blacker. Um, your next, oh, hey, I'm just saying, there's a lot of guys hanging around tonight. Your next comedian is a phenomenal performer. She will be on the Another Round show on November 3rd, performing her best set of all time. And that's from her lips to my, no, I don't want to say that. Um, that's how she, Guys, your next comedian is very good. And she'll be at the Another Round show on November 3rd. Everybody, put your hands together for the host of the Strange Ways Open Mic this Sunday. Put your hands together for Grace Meyer. Oh, some Sunday. Some Sunday. I'm missing the next one for the show that you just described. So I'll be hosting in December. Fuck you, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> um, how's it going? Uh, recently, I was trying to make a gynecologist appointment, and all of the options were virtual. I was like, what does that mean? Am I just supposed to describe it to them? They have to take my word for it? I'm like, no, doctor, it doesn't burn. I said, it's fire. Okay, if that's not how it works, then like what am I expected to show whole on camera? <laughs> but I'm paying I'm paying them! Something's 
smelling a little fishy. <laughs> um, it's, it's October, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, I just think it's interesting that like, it's the only type of cancer that people have to like, sexualize. You know, but it's also the only month where people like really pay attention to it. You know, because they have like the shirts with like the cartoon boobies on them and the bracelets, um, you know, all of that stuff. And I just think that we should start using that for other types of cancer. You know what I mean? Like, whatever month is Colon Cancer Awareness Month, I want to see people walking around with t shirts with just like zoomed in butthole cartoons on them. It's like, save the bussies. Okay, whatever month is like a lung cancer awareness month, I want people wearing bracelets that say, I heart blowjobs. You know, a lot of people want to raise uh, money for prostate cancer. Uh, that's why I'm always uh, wearing my bracelet that says, save the male G-spot. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, we're just saying things. <laughs> uh, one time, uh, I was hooking up with this guy, and he told me he had half ED. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, no way, me too. It just happens when I'm on my medication, and it's never become a full ED because I don't like to get so skinny that I don't have tits. <laughs> That was when I found out that men have a really different definition of the phrase ED. <laughs> um, do you guys ever, have you ever like plugged in your vibrator right next to your weed pen? And you're just like, I love modern technology. <laughs> Like, I was born in the right generation. <laughs> like, yeah, literally. Y'all know they used to literally be able to burn women alive just for being annoying? <laughs> I would have been dead so long ago. Like, say what you will about the planet ending and everything. We're living in the best time ever to be an annoying woman. <laughs> like, back in the day, they used to have to free bleed because they didn't have access to period products. Now, I just free bleed because Charlie XCX told me to. <laughs> okay, uh, one last joke. Um, do you guys know how to drive? I know how to drive, not to brag. Uh, but I recently found out that Google Maps is homophobic. Yeah, I, I realized this because they told me to keep straight past Hooters. And like it was, yeah, it was really messed up because I was on the way to Joanne's Fabrics. You know Joanne's, Michael's for lesbians. And the, the Hooters was like not even at an intersection. So it was just like how many gay bitches had to stop at Hooters on the way to Joanne's Fabrics before it became a part of the directions. It's also like, you're gonna tell me to keep straight past Hooters? I couldn't even keep straight past season three of Glee. Not a lot of gleeks in the crowd. It's fine. I've been Grace Moyer. Thanks, guys! Grace
Grace Moyer, everybody. Keep it going for Grace Moyer. All right, don't leave just yet. We got one comic left, and this guy is so good. You're le okay. The I have a job and children. Let's measure it up. Get the scales out. All right, well, that's fine. That's fine. We're better off without her. She closed the door. I do appreciate that. Uh, I do want to say, before uh, we get to our last comic, uh, Grace brought up that it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is a very serious topic. My, my wife's uh, grandmother died of breast cancer. It's a very important thing. Make sure, ladies, you go get checked. In fact, I made sure my wife went and got checked. We have a six-month-old. She's breastfeeding. And she wanted me to go with her because she was scared because it runs in the family. But she got very mad at me because we went down to the Virginia Women's Center up at Short Pump and uh, they brought her over to the mammogram machine. And then I started taping up a plastic sheet. And she said, what are you doing? I said, I've been to a Gallagher concert. I didn't know this was gonna work out. Um, this machine is gonna squeeze and you're gonna squirt and then I'm on the hook for $30,000? Fuck that. <laughs> but it is important that you guys go get checked. Just bring a poncho. <laughs> that would work better if I didn't shift into a serious tone and just held on to it. <laughs> I just held on to it and didn't make it serious. Anyways, uh, women, you guys are going to die, but football players have pink shoes on this month, so it's all good. Uh, moving on, Angelina Jolie used to have a big rack. Your next comedian. <laughs> Your next comedian's father died when Angelina Jolie got her tits chopped off. And that's not because of that. It's just the same time period. Your next comic. Uh, he has just returned to the city. He was very recently the judge of the Wet Juggalo t-shirt concert at the Gathering of the Juggalos. The guy who fills in for me every time I knock my wife up, which I plan to do again, don't get too successful. Your next comedian, everybody. Tyler. But what are you doing? Sit down. That's my best friend. That's your best friend? God damn it, no one's my best friend anymore. Your next comedian, Damien's best friend. We know how great he is. He leaves the door. Let's go. <laughs> Folks, when you piss or shit, it is standard custom to close. I'm over my own timer. It is standard custom to close the door behind you. Your next comedian, one of the finest performers in the city. A man who closes every door that is opened up for him. He's got a bad attitude. He negotiates for too much money. Put your hands together for Tyler Bauer! What's up, home sweet home? Let's get into it. I'm sure you want to go home. Thanks for coming out. You've been a great crowd. Nate was great. He's dying of cancer or something. God bless. Uh, <laughs> Nissan Altimas. Uh, Nissan Altimas are wild because I didn't realize I'd still be playing with plastic cars as an adult. <laughs> Little known fact, every Nissan Altima comes with a gun in the glove box and the serial numbers are scratched off. <laughs> if, uh, if you buy a Nissan Altima with a bumper hanging off, it should cost more. <laughs> like distressed jeans. It's vintage, guys. I drove here in my $45,000 2009 Nissan Altima. I was firing my unmarked gun the entire time! <laughs> home sweet home. We know the term thought. We've heard the term thought. Uh, it's a term used to describe a promiscuous person. It stands for that hoe over there. That hoe over there. What about the hoe that it's been in front of you the whole time? <laughs> that you don't even realize could be so sweet and so cute to you. And you didn't realize how much you actually need them in your life. Home sweet home, uh, <laughs> home sweet home, the trail of tears could have been a lot more chill if it was the trail of beers. <laughs> if the trail of tears was just sponsored by Coors Light, they would have got there a lot quicker in that Coors Light bullet train, let me tell you. Trail of beers, hell yes, Coors Light, love a good banquet. Uh, I bought some CBD lotion the other day. Uh, I used it to masturbate. I used the CBD lotion to masturbate, guys. And I couldn't come. My dick was too relaxed. 
my dick's back was too relaxed, home sweet home. So I had an idea, I had this cocaine infused lotion I also bought, so I started using that to masturbate. It created a whole other problem, my dick was now tiny and small and did not work. And it got hooked on the cocaine lotion, my dick started sucking other dicks to get more cocaine lotion. It was a real problem, home sweet home. In a last ditch effort, I remembered I had some ketamine infused lotion I bought in Cabo last year. I started using the ketamine lotion to masturbate. And then I was just kind of outside of my own dick, looking at my own dick. <laughs> it was a real trail of tears, home sweet home. Yeah! How the fuck do boneless ribs exist? Anyway. Are we all familiar with the song Father of Mine by the band Everclear? Yeah. yeah. The, the two, early 2000s alt rock band Everclear, they have a song Father of Mine. Uh, it goes, like, Father of Mine, tell me where did you go? It's about his father leaving him as a kid. In the, uh, in the song Father by Everclear, there's a line in a refrain where he says, I was just a scared white boy growing up in a black neighborhood. It's like, what the fuck, Everclear? <laughs> that was just right in front of us the whole time. That's wild. They had to edit the lyrics. Originally it was, Father of mine, the Chinese make me nervous. <laughs> In the live version, he says, Big Black Neighborhood. Yeah. And that's wild. It could it ever be more clear that they're racist. Guys, do sperm banks have a No Nut November bonus? <laughs> like, if I don't come all of November, I come in December 1st, I'm fully loaded. Do they give me more money? Is it based off the viscosity of my cum? Also, who controls the sperm banks? I want to know. <laughs> Who's controlling my calm, home sweet home? Seriously though, free Palestine, free Palestine, all right? <laughs> Israel saw free Palestine, they're like, ooh, free, don't mind if I do. <laughs> How about this? How about a guy that doesn't want to uh, come early during masturbation, uh, masturbating <laughs> with uh, CBD lotion? He just starts thinking about baseball? When I don't want to come during masturbation, I think about a woman. Uh, why is it every time that I'm at Planet Fitness with my boys and we're jerking each other off, it sets off the lunk alarm? What the fuck is that about, Planet Fitness? Somebody should really set the lunk alarm off on this Trump guy, though, am I right? Speaking of presidents, I like to imagine the different presidents giving head. How the different presidents would give dome. Like imagine this, picture this. George Washington, he's giving you head. He's putting in work. The glock glock, as the kids say. This is a George Washington, he's going down on you. <laughs> and then one of those wooden teeth just scrapes the base of your penis. Oh my god. Imagine this, picture this. Abraham Lincoln. He's giving you head. He freed the slaves, now he's freeing cum from your balls. He's putting in work. There's spit everywhere, his mascara's running. And that top hat just keeps hitting you in the chest like. I'd still come. Imagine this, picture this. Uh, ben Franklin, famous president Ben Franklin. Can you imagine what he's doing? <laughs> Sir, he's giving you head. You, ben Franklin's giving you head. You can deny it all you want, but Ben Franklin, he's putting in work. Giving you brain. That's what he calls it. He told me he calls, uh, when women fillets him, he calls it brain. I don't know what that's about. We've known each other for years. I, this is how I know about the Ben Franklin thing. Ben Franklin's giving him head. And then Ben Franklin just ties a string around the base of his dick that's attached to a kite. <laughs> and there's a key in the middle of it and he discovers electricity. And it sets off the world's first lunk alarm. <laughs> All right, I've been Tyler Brown. Thank you so much for bringing up Jacob. Uh, Y'all been a great audience. Thank you so much. Sure love you. Bye. Everybody, keep me going for Tyler Bauer.
making us think about what it'd be like if former presidents gave us head, but refusing to acknowledge that in the 250 plus year history of this country, there's no president who defines skull fucking more than Abraham Lincoln. You can skull fuck Abraham Lincoln better than any other president. Because in JFK's day, the bullets were larger and they blew out the back of the skull. And no one likes a grip like this. They like a grip like this. All right. Well, that was too intense of a joke, I think, to end the show. I'll end with this. Uh, Damien Anderson, who's been through a lot tonight. He took a shit and let the door open. He had someone walk in on him while he was taking a shit. Then he came out and let the shit open. Don't worry, that's a 4K camera. We'll all see exactly how much fiber you had. Uh, Damien, uh, a Haitian American, I would say. Uh, I would say only that and nothing more. Um, he dropped his phone and I happened to see the background of his phone was, uh, I would believe your people will call him Prince Vegeta? Yeah. Wakanda forever. Um, I guess, yeah. Nate and I, we realized we were getting old. This is before I had children. I think we were like 26, 27. We went and saw the Dragon Ball Z Broly movie. And we sat there for two hours and we walked out and I turned to him and I was like, uh, that was, uh, and he went, it was, it was, uh, and I said, I didn't fucking follow a bit of it. <laughs> and he went, yeah, me neither. I said, I have a headache. He said, I have such a headache. And, and, and we went and drank beers and the two of us did not talk to each other for four days afterwards because we were so fucked up. Uh, I enjoy all of you. I hope you all get to enjoy getting as old as Nate and I. Thank you very much for coming out tonight. Don't forget, we're doing the autism off out on the patio. Uh, we'll see y'all out there. Thank you very much. Good night. Goodbye. Hey, yo, hey.